It's time for Windows Weekly. The code has shipped. Windows 8 is RTM. Paul and Mary Jo will talk about that. More Windows rumors. The Windows 8 SDK, XNA, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thurot and Mary Jo Foley, episode 272, recorded August 2nd, 2012. Big Boy Outlook. Windows Weekly is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system to go with their incredible hosting, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs with automatic device scaling. For a free trial and 10% off your new purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS8. And buy audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. Time for Windows Weekly, and we have the great international version of Windows Weekly today, ladies and gentlemen. In the light trunks in the left corner, Paul Thorat from Rouen, France, where the sun is about to set on a beautiful full moon evening. Thank you for being here, Paul. Sure. Paul edits the super site for Windows and has warned us that he has a mere 200 kilobit upstream connection. I know. And, and, and it's be clear, it's kilobit. Kilobit. It's not a term you may not have, you might not have heard that term in a while. That's about as um, small as you get. It was the 20th century last time I had such a connection. I... Isn't that funny? You said 1997? Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Because we, well, you know, we had uh, cable modem very early in Phoenix, and uh, we never kind of looked back. So... This is apparently some kind of weird ADSL hell that I'm in here. <laughs> but, uh, it's, but it's French, so it's okay. Yeah. There's also a white dot. I don't know if that's on I know, the camera. I, I know. I wonder if that's on the camera. Can I? Oh, there, I got it. Did I get it? No, there's another Sorry. one. No. <laughs> oh. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Apparently, that's not the camera. It's on you. I don't know. No, you know what? That's a dead no, pixel. Uh, that's a dead damn pixel. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's back. Maybe it's a Skype artifact. That is the strangest oh thing I. Oh, it's gone. That is weird. Oh, yeah. it's back. That's strange. That's so weird. Oh, maybe it's a. Is it like our light reflection? Oh, maybe that's I what it is. I think it's from the light behind you. Yeah. Angle to the. If you slide over a little bit to your right, it seems to go away. Oh, uh, and oh, the other way. Yep. See? Yep. Okay. Could you. Uh, <laughs> do you mind turning those on? This is this kind of stuff normally yep. we'd be doing before the show, but God, I just love doing uh, it on the air. There she goes. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Now, this okay. is actually an, a beautiful shot. You're in a, a great apartment. Did you get that through Airbnb? How did you do that? Uh, no, we go through Intervac. This is Intervac. Home. It's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful house. It, it is in the middle of nowhere, but it is a, it's beautiful. The town is beautiful. The whole place is, uh, the, the place is modern and beautiful and nice. And Only then, the connection. And then you trade yeah. with an Intervac, another Intervac family for your place, and they're yeah. staying right now in Dedham. Going, what the That's hell right. have we? Th <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> they're, they're they're marveling at the size of our soft drinks and at the speed of our internet. <laughs> yes, they are marveling at that. Also here, and not from her home base, Mary Jo Foley of AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Um, I'm guessing, looking at those cupboards behind you, that you're in St. Louis, Missouri. Am I right? How did you know? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> what are you doing there? I'm uh, I'm. Attending the St. Louis Days of .NET, oh, that which cool. is happening in the next few days here at the Ameristar Casino in St. Louis. <laughs> wow! Well, yeah. Wayne, I, I would have been there if I if I wasn't in France. I would have gone to that. Will Wayne Newton be singing "Oh <laughs> .NET"? Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. No. no. I was just singing that song today to my daughter's <laughs> chagrin, actually. <laughs> oh, .NET? <laughs> well, the original version. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! We love you and C Sharp too. <laughs> <laughs> Win RT, it's a kernel, not a tablet. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm now <laughs> losing the thread. So, uh, you know, you're, you seem to go to a lot of fan fests and things like that, Mary Jo. This is kind of more of like a fan fest, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of good sessions Windows 8, Windows Phone, Azure, Hadoop, huh. even. Hadoop. 
But let, let's, let's, let's just be honest for a moment here, shall we? The yes. real reason you're in St. Louis has nothing to do with technology. It's the beer. It's because of barbecue and beer. <laughs> it also happens to be St. Louis uh, Craft Beer Week, but that is absolutely oh, unrelated. That's a, <laughs> what a coincidence! <laughs> Who the fuck it? <laughs> well, somebody brought... Her, her, her schedule was suddenly wide open. It was, uh, it was. Speaking of beer, and this isn't going to make a lot of sense because of where Paul is right now, but somebody brought me some I La Fin du Monde. Extra strong ale from Quebec. And the reason this is kind of apropos is Paul, when he's at home, has a big fan. You yep. sign behind him. Yeah, Unibrow is the company that makes that. That's, no, that's it's called Unibrow, really? You're oh, kidding yeah. me. Well, Unibrew, <laughs> like Bruno, Unibrew, I think would be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not Unibrow. <laughs> but it looks like Unibrow. <laughs> Unibrow means something Unibrow. else entirely. U N I B R O U E. Unibrew. Yeah. And it says, do not drink this in a champagne flute. No. So you can drink that in a big mug like a man. Yeah. Like <laughs> a man. That. Well, that's a... This is That's big. some good stuff. That's one of my favorite beers. I, well, uh, yeah. good. When you come out here, we'll share it. <laughs> Fan du monde. And, you know, I should, we should have a Mary Jo Foley, Paul Therott beer show. We talk about we this. Should. Maybe we could do a special one every like, quarter or that. something. Look at Steve Gibson does his anti sugar rants. You could do a pro beer show. We could have sure. beer pick of the week every. every <gasps> Mary Jo. I'm listening. Uh, I Perhaps. think you might have hit on something. <laughs> That'd All be right. fun. Let's do it. You know, because so many, so many people in the tech industry are home brewers. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Like that overlap, you know? Yeah. Hmm. How about that? <laughs> We've got a basement. I'm ready. Let's start. There's room for a, a vat. Uh, let's start with uh, Windows Weekly with... Ta -ta -ta. I should... Where's my Vuvuzela? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> a fanfare. It's been a while. God, it's, it's like a constipated elephant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was so disappointed. You know, though they just closed the door on the on the on studio. <laughs> Usually they do that right. to keep the sound out, but apparently they can do it to keep the sound in. So I was so disappointed because I remember this, uh, of course, at the World Cup, and I I thought I thought that it, the, every international sporting event would feature vuvuzelas, and there's not a vuvuzela in sight at the Olympics. No, <laughs> because the Olympics is a classy event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the but the fanfare, I can you know. It's not a fanfare with one. Oh, it is. <laughs> and we wonder why the mammoths are extinct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the fanfare is the release of Windows 8. Re release the hounds! Actually, I want to call it the, the artificial release of Windows 8, which, let's face it, was due, it was done about a week ago. Oh, you know, actually, somebody wrote me an email. I wish I could remember his name. I apologize if he's listening. But somebody wrote me an email and said, just guessing. But do you think they waited until August 1st? Because August is the eighth month of the year. Oh. And I thought, you know what? I do think they did that. Yeah, that's <laughs> really the kind do. of thing. Now, do we have yep. a number? Do we know what the bill number is? Yes. yes. Uh, 9,200. <laughs> you, you, you hit it at All that right, last but, week. but uh, no. Well, but here's why. So uh, obviously they wanted it to be 8888. Because the the real the real build number of the final build was somewhere in the eighty I think it was eighty five fifty something right. and they they artificially bump it up you know every time and they were shooting for eighty eight eighty eight but then they found a bug and they had to fix it <laughs> and so unfortunately I, I guess the way this build system works is you can't you have to increment and by so four hundred well they I think they just bumped it up to something even after a little while but right. Um, yeah, so the the build dates back to a week ago Wednesday uh, so it's it's eight days old. And wow, well, that's a long enough to know if there's any uh, any issues. This is it. Sounds like this is a done deal here. It's done. Yeah, yeah. it's done. This is it. Yeah, it's cooked. <laughs> um. So uh, we also that means now they said that no general availability is different. But do we know general availability now based on that? Yeah, we we've already known that that oh. general availability was uh, announced for October 26. So that's when it goes to retail and when it's going to be available. On new PCs, including the Surface tablet PC That's tablet. That's the, now the official uh, sanctioned date mm -hmm. for the release yep. of just, Windows just RT. For, just for the R, for the RT version right. of the Surface tablet, right? Um, and then, and they the, said uh, at the announcement three months later for the Windows 8 Pro tablet. 
That's a long time. Are they you sticking know, to that? It, that? It's yeah. I can't, well, they haven't uh, they haven't countermanded it, but it it seems odd to me still, as it always has, that the the Intel version of this, which you have to think a lot of people are going to want, won't ship until is it really like January, end of no. January, beginning of February? It's a long time. Yeah. Kind of a yeah. dead, get a dead time, we might say. Uh, well, is it just it's going to take that long to make? No, but they've we don't never really know it. why there's yeah. this three month delay. Although my, I keep speculating that um, the reason is they're they're going to swap out the Intel chip that's in this oh, and maybe they go want a newer Clover one. Trail yeah. instead. Cloverdale. Um, so now here's my question: Maybe is it protecting the OEM, saying, "Well, you've got a three month head start"? Yes, that could be it. Yeah. Would There's also, you know, and, and I don't quite understand this. Maybe Mary Jo knows more about this, but I've gone back and I've been I've been watching their video presentations of the various milestones, you know, over the past year or so, and they they talk about this thing called system on a chip, right? And and an ARM chip is apparently a system on a chip, but ARM is not the only system on a chip. Intel is working on system of a chip, on a chip designs, but the only thing they've shown off that has been a system on a chip on the Intel side, if I'm not mistaken has been an atom based design which is like the really low end processor you know and and even if the new atom designs that are um ivy bridge or newer um you know generation wise even if they're much more efficient and more powerful than the previous generation th there's a weird thing about uh, atom i think where the name is just dead you know that people hear atom and they shut down yeah because it was that so no one crappy is yeah, they they think they think netbook and they think I don't want this. You know, yeah, so yet the irony the, is they're doing Core i five chips that they're calling Celeron, which I would think would have an equally know, crappy reputation. I, I, exactly, yeah, exactly. Another horrible, horrible name from the past that nobody wants to be associated with. Um, so I think they I, want I it to be crappy because you know, I don't think they want people to think they're well, getting so, a real I, process. <laughs> you know, it's well, no, it's but, for but, low but end. See, my, I think it's changing though, because part of the deal on system on the chip, uh, system on a chip (SOC), uh, part of the deal with these designs is that you get certain Windows 8 slash RT features that you don't get otherwise, and one of those is connected standby, which is uh, basically a, a smartphone style state where the machine is essentially off, but there's some minimal heartbeat occurring that allows it to connect to the services that are updating your email, your instant messages, and all that kind of stuff, so that when you open the lid, it comes on instantly even though it was technically kind of off. And your stuff is all updated. You don't have to wait for the, each app to pull the server, right? It just happened. It's, it, it happened in the background. And supposedly with some very minimal hit on battery life. Um, so you get that, uh, you know how uh, modern laptops, but also uh, smartphones and tablets have um, a, a certain battery life. When you don't use it, it's, I don't know, you, you probably know what it's called, but it, it, it sits there on the shelf and you don't use it and it's, what's that called? Like standby time or whatever? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, it, it, it works like that. And so, uh, unless I'm wrong, unless I'm missing something, it seems like only Adam on the Intel side is going to support that, at least right away. And I don't know, that kind of makes it seem less interesting. Yeah. And, and maybe uh, my, what Microsoft is waiting on is a higher, you know, higher end version of that kind of functionality where they can have that in, because you would want that in the Surface, of course. Yeah. So I don't know, I'm, I'm, I just don't know. <clears throat> but it would yeah, make sense that they might wait for a newer uh, platform. Yeah. One of our yeah. listeners in, in, uh, on Twitter is saying, or maybe it's a way for them to try to push Metro-style apps more. You know, the first Surface that you come out with only runs Metro-style apps, and the second Seem, one... It seems that's upside much. down, that you would might want to wait it on does. Windows RT until you have more apps. It does seem Because like what that. you're competing against, Android and iPad, have literally 300,000 to 500,000 apps available. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I think um, I had I had a guy uh, I was asking this week how many how many Metro style apps are in the Windows 8 store right now and he believes there are four <laughs> four hundred and fifty. Let's put it this yeah. way: few enough that you could actually count them. <laughs> yes, he and yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> you could so actually just to be, just, physically count them. Just right. to just to clarify what she said, that was four hundred and fifty. Period. No, no extra zero. Yeah, <laughs> not, not four hundred and fifty thousand. Although, and we've said this many times, if it's four hundred fifty of the right apps, you know, Foursquare, Facebook, Twitter, um, yeah. we shall see. We shall yeah. see. This has been one of the. I, I have to say, I, I obviously have gone up and down on Windows Eight over the months. I mean, I've had a, a fairly crazy relationship with this thing, but uh, I feel pretty good about most of it. 
One of the things I, I still have a lingering doubt about, and part of the reason is because of my experience with Windows Phone, which I love and has just not taken off in the marketplace, is that the perception or the reality around the lack of apps in Windows 8 and RT is a problem and that it will sink this thing or you know, at least cause it to have growing pains. And, and that is a lingering doubt, and I think it's something that needs, you know, I, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see how Microsoft addresses that if they do uh, with whatever announcements they have around what apps are available, you know, at launch. So I guess we'll see. Well, at least we have a date. <laughs> yes, we got that going for us. We actually have a lot of dates. We have we they did yeah. talk this week about okay, when will you get the code if you're in different groups of people? Mm -hmm. So we know if you're an MSDN subscriber, you're going to actually get Windows 8 RTM bits on August 15th. They released that date. Uh, what other dates did they give? If, uh, and you know, Paul, I don't know if you know the answer Technet, on this, but they said if Tech no, but they said Technic gets a trial version on August 15th. But not did they the say whole that, thing. really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I um, didn't. Okay, I really. Uh, which I thought was weird. Yeah, I, I'm not I, sure why. I, I re, okay, so I received an email from a, a partner of Microsoft that may shed some light on what's happening here. I mean, there, there's there's kind of a weird thing occurring here where I I think we can all agree that they've made the purchasing of Windows 8 cheaper and easier than ever before, but they're also limiting things uh, on the sense uh, in the sense from the people who uh, would typically have gotten this for free as part of a subscription. So, for example, if you have a TechNet or MSDN subscription, I have a feeling that there are going to be far fewer licenses being thrown around than were the case in the past. And uh, the OEM email that I received uh, indicated that these people would get one key that was good for one product activation only on one PC, and that it would tie it to that PC, and that you could then use that key to install Windows 8 on another PC, because remember that with Windows 8, you have to insert a key during install, unlike Windows 7, where you could skip over that. So that will get you through setup, and you can actually install it, but then you won't be able to activate it. And so you could use that key multiple times just to get Windows 8 blown onto a computer very quickly, but you wouldn't be able to activate. That's very strict. Um, so I, I think these things are all tied together, that there's, there's a sense that, look, we're going to make it easy for you people to legally acquire this the right way at retail because you're using it on your actual computers. But if you were expecting to, say, you know, use a TechNet subscription to install this thing on all five of your computers at some really cheap price per year like the typical the TechNet subscription has been, uh, we're not going to be doing that anymore. And I, yeah. I, by the way, I think that's perfectly legitimate. Um, I think that's okay for them to do, but I also think they really need to explain it if that's what they're doing. Yeah, that makes sense because if if you are providing it for forty bucks, I mean that's yep. pretty. And no excuse, cheap. no excuse right. not to buy it. Right. Yeah. yeah. The other the other people who are going to get it um, sooner that we know about is if you're a volume licensee. So if you're like a business customer who has software assurance, you get the bits on August 16th. So the day after MSDN, <laughs> like a day you, later for some reason, right, which a is day so later. <laughs> and then <laughs> why don't they you, just give uh, everybody everything right now? I know. It's so Leo, staggered. And it's then, done, yeah, right? It's done. It's not <laughs> yeah. going to be different. I know. Is and, it and, a know, download you, thing? Is it like there's so many millions of, no, there can't be that many of them. No. No, and you're, you're raising a great point because so many people are saying, yeah. you know, if it's just like push the button, put it on a server, why do we have to wait till <laughs> I August 15th? I know. It's insane. Uh, it is. Right. Um, I, I believe yeah, the so post that Steve Sanofsky had said. What does Sanofsky say? No, I mean, I, I thought he said something to the effect of, look, we know you all have a lot of questions. Moving you know, on. Microsoft you is know, more and more I mean, becoming like the Grand Wizard of Oz where it's like, <laughs> we have our reasons. You just mm -hmm. sit there and... Yeah. Take I, it. I, yep. Why doesn't that seem like a? Don't yeah. you? I mean, what is so hard? What is so hard? Leo, I would, I would, I would answer that question. But people who question the process are uh, sidelined. <laughs> so oh, it's well. You, you know what? I'm already. I don't. I so I will question the process. WTF, Paul. Yeah, by the I way, know. I'd like to emphasize to the fine people in Redmond and Wagner Edstrom and. Everybody, that this is not Paul Thorat. Wait a minute, let me look, take down your lower third. This is not <laughs> yeah, really. pa Paul Thorat this speaking. Paul. Like, like, this is me. Not this is not Paul. It's not Mary Jo. It's me. What the hell, guys? What, how, what kind of way is this to run a company? See, he couldn't be saying this because he's drinking while I'm talking. <laughs> I, have to, I have to be slightly. No, I understand. 
<laughs> no, I understand. You you can't be you can't be. Uh, and you know, I get a lot of heat all the time for being. Why are you so critical? What are you so cranky about? But it does puzzle you know, me. I'm sorry. I I, re, I we probably had this discussion. I refuse to believe that the more time you're on this planet, you don't become more cynical. How can you no, not true. be more cynical it's, when you see what's going on in the world? I mean, true. is it not disturbing to all of us? It's true. I, I just and and look, I, I understand with Microsoft specifically that. You know, they, I'm sure they do have their reasons. I'm sure they do. They're smart people. Well, no, I, I and it. if they do, share them, please. Just tell us. Yeah. Feel, please. This feel is the modern share. world where the idea there, of yeah. a monolithic company keeping to itself behind its tower is gone. You talk to your customers. There's a happy middle ground, and we're not we're not hitting that. But and I, by the I, way, I, I'm it, not it, saying that Apple's uh, people are going to say, "Oh, you're an Apple fan." I'm not saying oh, I, I'm, I'm talking about this is a Windows. Apple. I'm talking Microsoft, but I'm not Apple saying Microsoft. Apple's any better. They're all. They're much worse. Much worse. Well, yeah, and I just uh, what is well, this new look, look, this look, new look, kind look, of listen, thing that's going there, on? There, there have to be eleven hundred blogs by Microsoft employees where they communicate every single day about something. There right. have to be, right? The the instances in which Microsoft actually releases a press release to announce anything are so few and far between that they're almost like miraculous little events. You know, uh, they they announce everything b via blog post these days. It's it's there it's very must, interesting. This is be... different. It must. It must have to do with some kind of fear uh, that if I don't know. I mean, I just. I, I. It seems so apparent to me that in an internet era, you know, this clue train era, that uh, customers and um, and businesses ought to be in conversation. That businesses ought to treat their customers respectfully, here's, communicate here's, here's, thoroughly and authentically. Here's a thought. Mary, Mary Jo has a note in the in the show notes. It's it's talking about you know what happens next. Is it going to be Windows Nine? Is it going to be something else? Something sooner? You know whatever it is. You, looking at the way things are going today, and the the fear and the doubt and the uncertainty around Windows Eight, you you can make a case that one of the things Microsoft could do to kind of ease this transition is say, look, we have a plan. We're going to update Windows Eight. Here's how we're going to do it. This is what we're going to do. This is a safe bet. Here's why. You know they. It would be the simplest thing in the world, and it would solve so many problems, and it would ease the conscience of so many people, and they just won't do it. I can't say why. I don't know why. I don't know why they won't do it. They just won't do it. You, they have their reasons. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you my theory why. The reason they won't do it is they're trying to trickle out news and keep the news cycle going, right? So there is going to be a day, I know, when they're going to disclose that and say, here's what we're doing next, and now you can mm -hmm. rest easy. But I bet they're saving that up, maybe for like general availability. Build. Oh, I, oh build, even that early. Or build, oh. yep. Build, okay. which is the week after general availability. I, I think one of the most important things that these people could communicate about Windows 8 is that this is not a hard stop for three years. Right. That we get it. This thing's not yep. ready. It's not done. We're going to update it. We, we have a plan. Here it is. Whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, to claim otherwise, uh, as good as Windows 8 is, and I really do think Windows 8 is good, I, I, it's also kind of crazy, right? It's, it's, it's like a mobile OS, and it's the Windows desktop, you know, all in one. It's, it, it's like that uh, old commercial where the guy got his chocolate in his uh, peanut butter, you know? <laughs> it's, it is this weird thing that is two things, really. Um, there's something odd about it. I get it. But you know, an explanation about their plan for the future, I think at this point in time, would be the right thing to do. Therefore, that will never happen. <laughs> you know, you know. I agree. But yeah, to your point, you know, like little, just, I think, I think they think we don't need to know. It's like less and less is yeah. being told to us because they're like, why do you need to know that? This is on a need to know basis. Like, but you know, basic this things like, why, I don't agree. Secret because, service. No. I know. I don't agree because things yeah. like why is TechNet only getting a trial subscription? I, that that, that I did not know. impacts well, a lot of people. But, what you know, right. a little blog post that discloses the reasoning behind that. And then you're like, oh, OK, now I understand. And that makes sense to me. And, and, and what happens if you don't communicate it is there is now. Well, I'm going to say two things. Yeah. First is there's this presumption that you don't have it, that you don't get that you don't know. That there isn't any reasoning behind this, and it's just you know, like crazy. It makes journalists crazy. Now, here's the question. Does it make real people crazy? Probably not. No, it does. I, well, right. Okay. <laughs> or does it? That, okay, that's we good. We hear from them. We hear from, like on Twitter. Uh, here's a guy today who keeps asking me, when is DreamSpark going to get Windows 8? You know, DreamSpark is one of their programs to get um, startups yes. involved with Windows technology. Yep. And when I asked Microsoft, no comment. Why is there no comment on that? They have no idea. That's just weird. Unless you, unless they're not going to get it, right? And then if it is that 
then they should say you're not going to get it, but you can buy it for forty dollars when everybody else can. It, it is forty dollars, but which okay. begs the question: Why can't I buy it for forty dollars right now? Right? What? What? I mean, are we protecting the partners? We're hoping that. Uh, by making people wait to buy the code that they'll just buy a new computer because $40 and $1,000 are roughly the same thing. I mean, what, what, what is the thought there? You know? Yeah. There's no way to know. All we can do is guess. No. no. Another, another one we don't know that I am getting a ton of questions on, and I bet Paul is as well, is uh, people are saying, so did Windows RT RTM this week too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no comment. Yep. No comment. Yep. <laughs> Why no comment? Like, that's good sure. news. If it did RTM this week, which I would think it did, why not say that, Microsoft? That would put people's I, minds at ease I was well. actually blown away that they allowed the server team to announce that Windows Server had RTM, <laughs> you know, on the same day. I figured they'd make them wait a day. Right. Uh, you know, which they had done in the past, right? right. For different uh, milestones. Even though those things occur at exactly the same time on the same day. Yeah, but we should we should mention that too. So what else RTM? What else did RTM besides Windows 8 this week? Mm -hmm. um, Windows Server 2012 RTM'd, Visual Studio 2012 RTM'd, Internet Explorer 10 on Windows 8 RTM'd. But another <laughs> one we don't know. Did Windows? Yeah. Did sorry? Did Internet Explorer 10 on Windows 7 RTM today? Yesterday, mm -hmm. rather. What, we don't what know. About, no what about Windows Server Essentials 2012? Or Windows uh, Server Foundation 2012. Right. Those, we don't those know. two, like, sort, sort of Server 2012 versions, you know. Did those yeah. RTM today? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. Right. Well, I'm putting so my we're not holding things away. Back. In that case, I don't know. I don't think we have any fanfares here. Uh oh. Here's <laughs> just going to stop. The Fubuzela. <laughs> Apparently, somebody said, and I don't know if this is true, they were banned at the Olympics. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> you. <laughs> Does. There will be no Vuvuzela in here. <laughs> None. Uh, all right. Oh, there goes Paul. At, uh, <laughs> we, there I think goes. we used up his monthly allocation. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, he 200 kilobits, he was doing great. Hey, yeah. can somebody uh, recall Paul? <laughs> the engineers have wandered off. <laughs> <laughs> I should have warned them. Uh, Paul's in France. We never know what will happen. We should have, we should have had Dr. Pizza ready as a backup plan. No, right. no, I have confidence. I trust the French I'm telecom. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, here, here he comes, Paul Thorat. We're going to recall I Paul. Knew this was gonna... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's total Welcome recall. Welcome to France. <laughs> now go home. <laughs> yeah, uh, and there and uh, it is the sun is going down. I think, but it's a beautiful. It's such, Excuse me, such a beautiful shot. I just think it's it's fun to be in France with Paul Thoreau. It has been, you know, this uh, part of the country is the part where it rains all the time, apparently. So they have a like a famous poster and sticker you can put in your car, and they have magnets for your refrigerator. It says uh, in French, uh, "Dare to Dream," and it's a picture. It's <laughs> a picture sun. of the. It's a map of France where the sun, like the weather, sun is every is only on Normandy, and the rest of the country is raining. And of course, because usually it's the other way around, apparently. Although That's actually, so it rains every day in France. But at, for whatever it's worth, it's been sunny every single day we've been here, every day. Oh, you're, you've had a great trip. Yeah, no, it's been beautiful. It's awesome. Um, Windows 8 store is open, as you mentioned, the 450, count them, Metro <laughs> apps. <laughs> Well, um, more more soon, hopefully. Uh, the four seventy five yeah. easily, I would say. Sure. By my, <laughs> Mike, now, how does uh, you know? As you probably are aware, Apple has some severe restrictions on what's possible in uh, for store for apps that want to live in the App Store. But it yep. sounds like Microsoft's a little bit more forgiving. Is that the case? What's the deal there? It has to be Metro. I, I would, right. I would say be. they're a lot more forgiving. Um, yeah. You can do demos. You can do paid upgrades. Yeah, trial versions, trials. in in-app purchases. Um. Yep. You can, yeah. So that you know, and how about now? One of the things Apple, I think, is is doing right is um, they're requiring code signing, and they're also requiring uh, uh, sandboxing. That you have to say there's something called yep. entitlements. You have to say as an app developer, I'm going to be doing this, this, and this, and that will be. Uh, you can't do anything but that. You're sandboxed. And the end user gets to see what permissions you have and can decide yeah, whether or not to. This is automatic use it. in Metro. It's exactly. It like is that. good. I think that's really the right thing to do. Yep. 
Yeah, I'm. De- I'm sure developers. You know, how could I, it be I, bad? I mean, it's if even for them, this forces them to be. No, it, specific. it's it's good. I mean, obviously, Windows 8 Metro is kind of a, a question mark about uh, how big the audience is going to be. Um, but they've done it the right way, and and they've built on all of the stuff that they've done and what their competitors have done in the past, and. Uh, They've looked at some of the stuff that I, you know, I think a lot of people would say Apple maybe isn't doing necessarily right, and that you know, uh, and some yeah. of the stuff that Google's not doing right. Google's a little too open, you know, right. a too, little right. too wild west, right? Right. Uh, so they are curating, and um, they are curating. So every app and, is approved by Microsoft and uh, is checked out yeah, and vetted yeah. for safety and all yeah. that stuff. And they, they, it's it's uh, you know, unlike a lot of the stuff we've been complaining about with Microsoft, I would say that the Windows Store process, you know, the process of making an app getting it on the store and all that is extremely transparent. I think this is one of those things that they did. It looks like they've just done it right. You know, I've not submitted an app, so I, you know, I'm not speaking from a position of authority here, but based on what, you know, the way they've described it and the way it looks, um, it looks like they've done it. Uh, they've done it right. How, what is yeah, the developer what, what reaction uh, to the uh, Metro store? Cause there's a very, in the, in the Mac world, there's a very mixed reaction to the app store. There are some developers who have say, "I'm washing my hands of it. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be there." On the Mac side, you mean? On the Mac side. So, what is? Are they seeing? Yeah. Uh, are they embraced by developers? What is the developer reaction? I think for, you know. For, I, for I think developers are um, pretty upbeat about the terms of the store from the ones I've talked to. You know, the the questions for developers that I keep getting are, you know, I'm still not exactly sure how to build a Metro style app. I, you know, there's guidance out there, there's videos, but I need more help. And that's one of the reasons. Okay. So now it's. Availability. They're, oh, good. They're going to have more on that. <laughs> I, thought, um, I thought we were going to lose Mary Jo. Uh-oh. No. no, no there was just, that <laughs> was just reasonably paused. sure that was me. That was me freezing. But I guess it <laughs> no, that was, uh, okay, here we go again. People often ask us, Leo. Bring more wine. You're trying to do a professional it's, broadcast it's a operation. Game. Why do you use Skype? And I say because it's free and I'm cheap. Because it's Microsoft. What could go wrong? <laughs> you know, I, I have to say now, because it's Microsoft, I could say, well, Actually, it's, it's Windows Weekly. And we, you know, uh, this is a complete non sequitur, but since we're talking about Skype, it, does this strike anyone else as a little odd that Skype, despite being part of Microsoft, is never treated as part of Microsoft? That, you know, some executive leaves another company and comes to Skype, or the guy from Skype has a quote about something, you know, it's like they're not like really treated as part of Microsoft, right? How, how is it they get this special kind of treatment? You know, even though they were, you know, Yammer was purchased by Microsoft. We're, not gonna, we're never going to hear from Yammer again. Yammer's gone. But Microsoft purchases Skype, and like Skype is still this kind of singular independent entity for some reason. Why, why did they get that? Why did they get that pass? I, I think they, they do it intentionally because they know a big part of the reason they bought Skype was to get the coolness of the brand, right? And uh, you never see Microsoft say Microsoft Skype. Right. Like in press releases, anywhere, you never right. see that. It's always just Skype. And in fact, when I did Microsoft Skype in a headline, someone said to me, oh, that's so weird, but I guess that's technically correct. They are part of Microsoft. But <laughs> Microsoft doesn't want that right. connotation, which is funny because, well, you know, it's their brand. But as uh, somebody in the chat room just pointed out, Outlook.com integrates Skype, does it not? It will. It will. It will. So, Not yet, but it will. So that's interesting. No, they're, they're definitely integrating it. You know, it's going to be integrated into Outlook two thir- uh, 2013, part of Office 2013. Um, you know, it's, but it's it will preserve its brand, as it should, because as I think you're exactly right, Mary Jo. The, they bought it for the brand. Yeah. So don't undermine that. Don't make it Skype, Microsoft Skype. No. It's not, not like Microsoft is the, no, the no. death knell for no 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 no. Know. I don't mean that. I, I, that's that that comes off wrong. But I wouldn't say make it Apple Skype yeah. either. If it were Apple's company, it should be Skype. Skype is a very good brand, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and I think it makes people nervous to think a big company, <laughs> even though Skype is a big company, <laughs> but a big a big company is is uh, now in charge. Yeah. Right. Well, at least the Huffington Post is still independent. You know, we got that going for us. And then, uh, you know, like <laughs> the AOL Huffington Post, you notice they don't say that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just the same thing. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't mention that we're owned by NBC. I'm sorry. Did I say <laughs> that? <laughs> we're the smallest freaking province in the Viacom Empire. NBC Twit. <laughs> Cable Town owns us. Bringing you the- <laughs> no, that was just a dream I had one. Right. Yep, yep, Cable Town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this entire from now on everything we do will be taped delayed eight hours just uh, so you know 
<laughs> right. What did they talk about in the podcast? I can't say. It won't be awesome <laughs> no <anymore>. tweeting. <laughs> Oh, right. man. And, of course, uh, you know, I'm on Twitter, and I know already the results of one of the most important events tonight that we won't see on NBC till later tonight. I already know who won the gold. And, it's in oh, fact... Was it, was, it, was it about the one guy from France who won a medal, and that's all they... <laughs> no, it was an American. But, but, <laughs> but, but the, and then somebody wrote a very funny... Oh, it was, um, it was in uh, the New Yorker, uh, dot com. Oh, I, I almost want to read this to you. It was so, uh, maybe mm -hmm. I will. I will read it to you in a minute. We're going to take a break uh, and continue on uh, with our show. Mary Jo Foley in St. Louis for the beer, I mean for the, uh, the Microsoft.net uh, party. And uh, <laughs> By the way, just pointing out, St. Louis is arguably more of a French name than Rouen. St. Louis. Well, Rouen, yeah. what is that? Is that not French? It's, it's got to be some kind of weird... Uh, oh, man. Uh, Norm, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not Nordic, but uh, Norman. Like Are you British. saying it's Anglo-Saxon? I think I bet it is. I bet it's it like is. the Brits. Hey, it's ruin. We we see this town. We ruined it. I just call it ruin. Yeah. Actually, the, I believe the Allies ruined it. But yeah, no anyway, kidding. isn't that sad? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that sad? Uh, we're going to talk briefly about our great friends at Squarespace.com. Then on and on with Windows. And Microsoft and Xbox and all sorts of stuff. But Paul Therat of the Super Site for Windows, WindowsSuperSite.com. Mary Jo Foley of AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Paul's book, Windows 8 Secrets, will be the must-have book for you new Windows folks. Does that mean October 26th for Windows 8 Secrets? No, it's going to be before that. Even before then? Because you'll need it before then. You'll want I have it. the final page proofs now. Yes! Yes! That's exciting. There's not, you know, for anybody who's ever written a book, there's there really the, the writing of the book is so hideously awfully painful that the only celebration, yep. the only happiness at all is having written the book, getting those proofs and saying it is done. You know done. what I'm starting to think about, though, is what the next book's going to be. Oh, Paul, Paul. <laughs> no, <this. laughs> no, <you're not. laughs> He's got a problem. He's, he's definitely got a problem. I'm just no, no, he's not kidding. He's, he's, he's I know, I know. <laughs> hey, I, it's, I know what it is, too. It's Windows Phone 8. It's Apollo. I, I told Mary Jo that I said, this is not your responsibility, but it is your responsibility to make sure that I never read it. <laughs> now you, see, you know why he's saying that to you, Mary Jo? Because he told me that last time, and I didn't succeed. Yeah. Okay. I, I, well, you, I did I turned succeed. To, I, I turned to Green Egg Pastures. you got to tie him I to the on. mast. <laughs> Strap him down. Thou shalt yeah. not write a book. I practically wrote a book uh, last night and the night before on uh, Reddit. You know, I did an I am Leo Laporte chief twit, ask me anything. It was so much fun doing an ask me anything. And I read I, that. Wow. That was really good. Oh, that so was awesome. much fun. And I thank you all the Redditors who, uh, you know, were so nice and kind. And, and it was it was really great. But I have to tell you, Dick Bartolo is doing his ask me anything today. Uh, uh, so you're saying that this is hour. nothing like Twitter, that people are polite and nice. And <laughs> that they are not. Well, it's Is fun because you can, you're, first of all, you got more than 140 characters. Second of all, it's sure. threaded, so there's comments. I mean, and it lasts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can go back. I went back last night and answered more questions. I'll probably go back tonight and answer them. Uh, yeah, there's oh. no, you're right. Nothing like Twitter <laughs> in, in every nothing respect. Nothing like Twitter. Nothing like Twitter. That Dick, sounds good. Dick DiBartolo uh, does his Ask Me Anything 1 p.m. Pacific, one hour from now, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So go to Reddit, R E D D I T slash R slash I A M A. And uh, if you've wondered what it's like to be Mad Magazine's maddest writer, I'm sure there'll be a lot of Mad Magazine questions, but also he wrote the match game. Uh, so our, our Mad's maddest writer, Dick Bartolo, and our Gizwiz will be uh, doing his Ask Me Anything later today. Very, very cool. Meanwhile, let's talk a little bit about Squarespace.com. I'm telling you, these guys, the new Squarespace is here. The new Squarespace version six, we've been it's been in the I think years in the making, and they re, and because they really wanted to get it right, they entirely rewrote the code base, written from scratch, fifty new and improved features. Um, you can go to squarespace.com and and watch the movie and find out more about what Square the new Squarespace offers. It is incredible. First of all, of great templates, but these, by the way, are now this is the hot new t thing in. Um, in uh, in uh, web page design, these are this is responsive websites. What that means is, 
uh, the same site looks great on all platforms. When you upload a, a, a picture, for instance, they resize it into seven different files. So it looks great on a 27-inch display, on an iPad, an iPhone, a Windows phone. That's called responsive design. It's not a mobile site. It's a site that just looks great everywhere. I want you to try Squarespace free. If you visit squarespace.com, you can click the try, try it free button. Actually, they call it uh, something else now. But just it doesn't take a credit card, just your name, your email address, a password, a name for your site. And you can import all your content from your existing website, You can, including all the images, the comments, everything, and try it for two weeks absolutely free. Link in to uh, all of your social networks like Twitter, Flickr, LinkedIn. You could put Google Maps in there. I mean, it really is so slick. The layout engine means it's so simple to make your own design. But if you know CSS... The sky's the limit. I just am a big fan. As Squarespace always has been a wonderful hosting company and uh, the best content management software, and it's gotten even better. Go to squarespace.com right now. Actually, it's called the button uh, is called Get Started. Click the Get Started button, and you can. And th it's nice now because they just they they don't even bother asking for information. They just show you the templates. All the different looks you can have. I mean, oh my goodness. And Leo, when, make it stop. I know, it's driving you crazy, probably. <laughs> Poor Paul has to suffer along. But now, once you start with it, with this, you can customize it. Look at this, Amelie. But that's just the base. You can now completely customize it. Uh, do everything you want. I want you to try it free for two weeks. You don't need an offer code or a credit card. But if you do decide to buy, let me go back. Uh, to Squarespace and show you um, their pricing because it's kind of amazing. They revamped their pricing recently to make it very, very simple. $8 a month. These are the yearly plans. You can amp you can go month to month. a little more expensive. But $8 a month for the basic plan. 2 gigabytes storage, 500 gigabytes bandwidth. You get 20 pages, galleries, and blogs. That's for an inexpensive kind of one shot. But if you're really going to throw, you know, get this site going and really throw your weight behind it. Get the unlimited plan, 16 bucks a month. Now, this is hosting and the software, everything. And you get unlimited pages, galleries, blogs, unlimited bandwidth. This is for a company, you could do this. Unlimited storage and unlimited contributors. It allows you to do, you could do the Huffington Post for 16 bucks a month. And when you buy an annual plan, they automatically will f give you free domain registration so you can have, you know, your own special domain name. And they'll hook it up and everything so it all works. All you have to do when you do this is go to squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS8. And they will give you 10% off that first purchase. So that 16 bucks a month, it's even better. You get a buck 60 off a month. This is a this is a remarkable deal. I want you to try it. The best hosting, the best software, Squarespace. Dot com. Try it today. Let me see if I can find this uh, letter to NBC <laughs> from the New Yorker. It's a, uh, it's uh, one of their humor writers. Oh yeah, the Borowitz, the Borowitz report. I, it's actually a letter. It's, it's 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 it's, fer it's fertile ground. <laughs> it is fertile ground for humor, is it not? Yeah. This is fake news and political satire. Uh, let me see if I can find the. Uh, I think it's a letter from NBC, actually. A message from NBC this, yeah. about its yeah. Olympic coverage. I'm, I'm with just a little intermezzo before we go back to the... A message from NBC about its Olympic coverage. Dear NBC viewers, Last night, millions of you were thrilled to see the USA's Missy Franklin win the gold medal in the 100-meter backstroke. That is, you would have been thrilled, except that just before the race, we showed promos of Missy Franklin <laughs> appearing on the Today Show. With the gold medal, she won for the 100-meter backstroke. So, if you've been watching NBC in primetime in the past few nights, you've probably noticed how, night in, night out, we've been wrecking the Olympics for you. All we can say is, our bad. At NBC, we're just not used to broadcasting things people want to watch. But all that's about to change. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love this. Tonight, for those of you who that's like awesome. watching the Olympics without having every moment drained of its entertainment value... We're launching a new premium service called NBC Free, the Olympics, without any contributions from NBC whatsoever. For only twenty nine ninety five, you can watch the Olympics. You know what? People would buy this. For only twenty nine ninety five, you can watch the Olympics with no spoilers, no maudlin personal narratives, and no promos for NBC's new fall shows like that egregious one with the doctor and the monkey we show like every five minutes. And for thirty nine ninety five, no Ryan Seacrest. 
<laughs> is Ryan Seacrest part of the Olympics broadcast? Oh, my God. You're not seeing this. I forgot, Paul. You're in France where you could probably watch this. Listen, I, the only thing I see is the one guy from France who won a medal. <laughs> over and over and over and over. This is, I swear to God, this guy is like a national hero now. <laughs> well, he's a great swimmer. He was amazing. Oh, he Aniel, was right? Aniel or Angel? It never, gets, Angel no. never gets old. Oh, yeah, over and over. Well... It's just kind of what NBC has done is just unbelievable. It's yeah. just unbelievable. And I tell you what, this, I would pay 30 to, bucks to not have to just have a feed. It's the Internet. You know, and by the way, we all have DVRs. If I wanted to watch it tonight, I would. Right. You know, just. Yeah, I could. God. Exactly. <laughs> oh, this is not hard. Just a thought. So and it's impossible if you it, you you'd literally have to log out of the internet if you didn't want spoilers because yeah. it's all over Twitter it's all over everything you can't get yeah. away from it. Yeah, I, it's you know. I, but I I do have to admit I was upset at first, especially because of the opening ceremonies which were taped, delayed, and and edited, right. uh, <laughs> edited for content. But uh, I I've been edited watching. For content. Yeah, they took out. Something they thought American viewers wouldn't watch, which was a tribute to the folks who died in the uh, July seventh bombing in uh, Great Britain. They thought, oh well, Americans aren't don't know what that is, so we'll just cut that. You know, that's a little maudlin. We'll just, you know, what they what they yeah, put in. Let, let's you know what they put in. What? They put in Ryan Seacrest interviewing Michael Phelps. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> it's kind of just um, tone deaf. I think is the word I would use. But uh, I have to say, after watching Olympics in prime time for like five straight nights, I've said, <laughs> thank you. I've had enough. Oh. I'm moving on. Now. So actually, <laughs> knowing that my, Ryan Seacrest is part of this, I'm kind of glad I've been friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? For only 10 bucks more, <laughs> we'll take Ryan Seacrest. I, I can't understand a freaking word they're saying, but I'm pretty sure the guy on TV here was a swimmer or a runner or something. He was clearly an He's athlete. a swimmer. Aniel. Yeah. Gold medal for France. And he swam beautifully. You, beautifully okay for a frenchman all right let's move <laughs> no no <laughs> remember my name is leo laporte i am a frenchman um moving right along i've now i've, I've got to go back to windows 8 i lost my notes windows 8 has gone to sleep on me going back to one note mx which i am liking quite a bit by the way it really is a nice way to uh to share your yep. notes. Oh, we start talking about Outlook.com. Let's talk a little bit more. I signed up immediately because I wanted my name, Leo Laporte at Outlook.com, and I got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you, I want to let you comment because we talked on Twig yesterday about the Microsoft video, yep. the promo for Outlook.com, which they took Gmail. Oh, I've not. Okay. You haven't seen it? They took I've Gmail. Seen, they I've crossed out it. all the parts that they didn't want to have anymore. That, oh, you don't need this anymore. You don't need this anymore. And they said, now the new Outlook.com. And it looks exactly the same. The same as. as the, same as. Am I wrong, Mary Jo? It looks the same. The same as Gmail or the same as Hotmail? As Gmail. It, it's Gmail. no different except the one thing. They, Gmail has that bar on the right where they put things like your chat and stuff like that. Instead, Microsoft's replaced that with some ads. It, do you feel. How do you like Outlook.com? Maybe it's just me. Um. I, I can't compare it to Gmail because I am not a Gmail user. Okay, fair enough. Um, I can't. But <laughs> but I like I like it as much, if not more, than I like Hotmail. And you know, I think I think it's funny because people who are using Hotmail today, like the most current Hotmail users, they already have seen a lot of these features that people who have not used okay. Hotmail in a long time are finding so you know wowing is, yeah. and surprising. Like sweep yes. and eliminating gray mail uh, and all these features. These are already in I, Hotmail. I do but, like it that Office 365 yeah. kind of appears in here so I could see your documents actually in here and stuff like that and photos. This is um, this is uh, a beautiful form of tech ignorance, you know, that I, I think for years and years there were a lot of people who ignored Hotmail because of the name, that they felt oh, yeah. it had the oh, yeah. technical cachet of AOL, you know, that there was just something wrong with that name. They didn't like it. You know, Microsoft tried to uh, overcome that by providing live.com email addresses. Of course, you can do custom domains for free. It's like you can on Gmail. Nobody knows this, whatever. But over the past several years, Microsoft has added a tremendous amount of functionality to Hotmail. It is a fantastic uh, webmail client. It, it, it's, I switched from Gmail this year. It's fantastic. Um, 
you know, people just can't get over that hump. You know, it reminds me of, uh, I don't want to call it any, anybody in particular here, but I mean, I have a, uh, a wife of a friend who's been a Mac user for a long time, and she has, she has no problem going, uh, opining on and on about how bad Windows is. She hasn't used Windows in seven years. She has no idea what she's talking about. She's a wonderful person. I love her, but I have to keep, you know, correcting her. Like, so how long ago was it you used Windows? I'm just curious because you, you have a very strong opinion about this thing, but you never actually use it. And Hotmail is like that. People, for whatever reason, it was like a lightning rod that Hotmail was lame, you know. And I can tell you, I, I mean, I've been using Hotmail every day for the past several months now, and Hotmail is, in fact, fantastic. And what we see now is an Outlook.com client that has a kind of a metro-style UI, uh, very clean, very nice, very fresh, modern, however you want to describe it. But it's basically Hotmail Plus. I mean, it, uh, it, actually, there's something called Hotmail Plus. So it's, it's sort of like Hotmail Plus Plus, I guess, if you will. Like, it's, it's everything that was great about Hotmail, new UI, and then actually some new capabilities as well. And uh, I, I actually think that this is a fantastic first-class webmail client, it, uh, absolutely on par, if not better than Gmail, and that... Um, uh, for people who are coming to uh, or facing the world from a Windows perspective, because you use Windows PCs, it integrates with all the things that you care about. You know, Office, uh, the Office web apps, SkyDrive, all that stuff. And it's, I, to me, it's, it's just a no-brainer. I actually think Outlook.com is fantastic. Even you the know, name you know is great. You know what it reminds me of, though? Um, Microsoft is going to hate mm -hmm. that I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> Remember when they did okay. the Mojave experiment? Oh, yeah. When yeah. They they yep. had a bunch of people in a room, and they showed them Windows Vista, but they didn't tell them it was Windows Vista. And they were like, wow, this is yep. amazing. This is unbelievable. They could have done the Mojave experiment this is way with better than Vista. Hotmail. Right. Right? Yeah. Because yep. this is Hotmail, yep. but with, with, nobody even yes, knows. with a lot of new features. But Well, you know what, um, though? I, I, I think what puts it over the top, though, is the UI. Because it's got – obviously, yeah. they could have just called it Hotmail. I mean, but, right. you know, I, I've had this problem with the Metro-style mail app that's in Windows 8 because it's, it's so touch-centric. You know, if you select an email or some uh, range of emails and you want to do something with it, like move it to another folder, it's this ponderous kind of affair. You have to put the app bar up, move to, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can't – there's no drag and drop. So this web client that they have for Outlook.com – has, of course it has web, you know, uh, drag and drop. So it works, it looks a lot like the mail app, but it works like a desktop app, you know? It, it really is a, a kind of a fantastic thing. And I, I've been using the, the Hotmail web application, if you will, the web page, for months and months and months. And now using this, it's like, oh, God, it's, it's beautiful. I, I love this thing. I mean, it, it's just so clean and nice and well done. You know, it really is nice. And it has a different name. And it's free. <laughs> but it is, so this, so, uh, so uh, it is Hotmail, though. If, 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 for instance, if I am using, if I log into Hotmail now, will I get this? No. No. Uh, unless you Not choose. Unless you, you choose. Can, so you have choose. to choose. Okay, got it. Right. Yeah, they're, they're kind of moving over to it in a, a staged way, right? right? So if you choose to, you can get the, uh, the new Electacom uh, mail and people experience. That's their new, you know, contact management solution. Uh, over How do you time, get they're going to add SkyDrive. Do I have I to? Uh, what I was told, I don't have it now anymore. But you know, if you are you looking at Hotmail? Uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm looking at Outlook. Should I go to? Uh, let me go to my Hotmail. Well, you already have it. So if you yeah. go to your Hotmail account, so I believe what you can do is go to Options, and then you'll you'll see a choice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Something and I don't yeah. remember the name of it, but there's there's some option, and in in the Options menu, there's a a way to choose the new version. Great. All right. Let me... And then if you don't like it and you chose it, there's a an option to go back to Hotmail. Oh yeah, I see that. Switch back to Hotmail. Yep. Yeah, yep. So I yep. can I can switch back if I don't if I don't want to be. Which yep. which a guy today on email said to me, I can't believe you made me switch to Outlook, and I loved Hotmail. Now I hate Outlook, oh, and you're please. really a horrible tech journalist. Oof. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I made you do that. She said, I made you do that. That's really, awesome. I, I didn't know it was that powerful. <laughs> I I made you do that. So there's quite a bit of uh, the settings are inter are worth going through too, huh? Absolutely. But again, you know, if you're familiar with Hotmail, and I'm getting the, the vibe that not a lot of people are, <laughs> this stuff was Somebody in the chat room said, I didn't know you Hotmail know. was a Microsoft product. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Well, so by the way, I, 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 I talked to these guys. It's funny because the people that make this are what used to be MSN, what used to be Windows Live. And now they're in some kind of weird nether region where they don't really have a name. I mean, they're, they're part of the Windows organization, but uh, they're going to have to give these online guys a name, right? So they make... Right. So they make Hotmail and SkyDrive. They make Messenger. And they make the kind of legacy applications 
that we think of as Windows Live Essentials today. Uh, Microsoft Photo Gallery uh, and some of the other apps that will be coming down, the, you know, that may or may not be updated in the future. I'm not really sure. Um, they're, they're not a, <laughs> they're their own kind of group. They're what used to be Windows Live, essentially, but they don't really have a, like a name yet. Like they don't know what they're going to call themselves. And it's, it's kind of an interesting period for them. But um, they've always, I've always loved these guys. I've always loved the way they, they did things. I was always very nervous when they got pulled into Windows that they would get screwed over by the hard rocky and, and, the, and the hugeness of Windows, which they kind of did. And um, it's neat to see them kind of flexing their muscles a little bit here again because this is the type of stuff that these guys do very well. And, you know, I, and they were very blunt about this. I, the conversation I had with uh, those folks, they said that, you know, look, uh, we made all these improvements to Hotmail. We get it, but we're not really winning. You know, even though Hotmail today is still bigger than Gmail, it's still bigger than Yahoo Mail, um, they're not really setting the world on fire. And they're certainly not attracting tech enthusiasts, early adopters, you know, those kind of things. And those people, who, again, who with, with complete ignorance have no idea what's been going on on the Hotmail side of the fence and yet feel very strongly about it for some reason. And I think this is their attempt to overcome this. And, and the Outlook name is very much like Surface, where uh, it's a brand they already had. It's not something I, I would never have come up with this personally. But then I hear it and I think, you know what? Yeah, that actually, okay, sure. Uh, Microsoft email, people think Outlook, you know. Yeah, I, I like the Outlook.com name. I, at first I was like, oh, is that going to be confusing? But I don't think it is that confusing to people. Um, they know. They just think Outlook. Oh, email. Um, the o the only confusion point of confusion that, that a few people have had is what, when they have got both an Office three sixty five account and then they're signing up for Outlook yes. dot com. Um, some yep. people are having problems if they haven't totally cleared out the cookies in their browser of when they sign in they sign into the wrong one because sometimes you use Outlook dot com um, from Office three sixty five. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're abusing the emoticons, by the way. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Having too if much like, fun. Oh, so, if you like it so much, enjoy this email. Then, well, <laughs> so somebody some was saying they didn't like the uh, co the email composition interface, but I've you know this it is the text is big now. This is uh, this is of course on uh, Windows 8. And I, you know, and I yep. think like all of Windows 8, this kind of focused on a, a tablet uh, kind of interface. So it had full screen it, it, and everything. It, it's big. So by the way, it, 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 and again, this is just exactly like Hotmail, actually. Right. Um, full, full keyboard shortcut support. You could hit Control Enter to send this email. Uh -huh. um, it. You can use Gmail uh, keyboard shortcuts if you want. Yahoo oh, key, that's keyboard shortcut. Yeah, it's got all this stuff built in. It's 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 actually very very nicely done and. This interface, unlike the one in, again, in the Windows 8 Mail app, I think works very well with a keyboard and the mouse. It's just a nice, I, I really prefer this one. This is actually my favorite email client. I love this thing. So this is how you do all your mail now? Well, I can't, unfortunately, because of the way my work works, I can't funnel my work email through any uh, other email right. client. So you have to really use, yeah. So I have a split, you know, two tabs. I've got one for yeah. Hotmail, which aggregates everything but my work account. And then I have my work account, which is, uh, you know, Exchange 2010. It's uh, is, like Outlook web is, app. Uh, is the desktop live mail gone? I mean, is that really just... Uh, that is a, an open question. I don't. Do you know the answer to that one? I mean... I'm talking they're, Windows they're 8, of course. No, I know. Uh, so, the, like, the desktop application, the what used to be Windows Live Mail. Yeah. And the, um, yeah. I don't know, personally. I mean... I know that the ones they're bringing forward are going to lose the whole Windows Live brand. So I know that uh, Photo Gallery is one of those apps. I know that Movie Maker is one of those apps. And that those applications will be called Microsoft whatever. So it will be Microsoft Photo Gallery, Microsoft, uh, you know, Windows, or I'm sorry, <laughs> no, no, not Windows, Microsoft uh, Movie Maker. But I'm not sure if uh, Mail is coming or not. It may just simply be... Well, there's the mail yeah, app. Not, right? There still is a mail. Oh, oh is it a Metro the, Mail app? Right. In other ah. words, the Windows Live Essentials Windows Live Mail application. Yeah, but just Will that there's be... there the thing that's I thought this was a little bit confusing, but maybe just confusing to me. There's the mail app in Windows 8. One of the providers you can choose for that app is Outlook.com. And then right? you'll get out basically this. Yeah. Yeah. Do so, I? Uh, where are the filters? How do I? How do I create new filters? Because that's so. The, there. So it depends on what you're. There. There are rules and there are filters. Oh, okay. Right. So rules. Rules are what determines where mail goes when right. it comes in. Right. And then the filters for Hotmail or for Outlook.com or for you know for anti uh, 
uh, spam and that kind right, of thing. Right. Um, you would let's see. Go back. actually. I'm unclear why you can't see other options, but if you uh, <laughs> just select the message, I, well, there should be more messages in the toolbar or more <laughs> items. Yeah, so go up to uh, dot, 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 I guess. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, here it is. There, I got a menu now. Ah, good. junk, sweep. I finally can see the sweep thing. That's good. Yep. Uh, I like that sweep thing. Yeah. Right and there. then here's and manage rules. This would be for sweeping. And so this is for performing actions on email when it arrives. Right, right. right. As opposed, and you can do that. You, so yeah. that's, that's – is that filters or is that – Well, it's. It, I think that, that – I think rules are what – Filters are in Gmail. I, I'd have to go yeah. look that up to be sure. But Gmail I confused me because they. Uh, I actually don't understand the difference between rules and filters. So, and I. Okay, so well, uh, Gmail has something called labels. The, the look at this. Of Under junk mail, there is now an entry called "My friend has been hacked." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. I don't that's know. been in uh, that's been in Hotmail for a while. It too. says, "We'll look into your yep. friend's account to make sure they're safe." Way to be a good friend. <laughs> Way to be a good friend. Be, that's really that. That means that that's happening so often. There's actually a menu item for it. So, but it, if you look on the left there, in the bottom left, there's something called quick views, right? So, quick views are like the label views. You yeah, get I love in, that. Uh, Gmail. These are great. So you can click on like shipping update. Right, which is kind of a cool one. Right. If you have any shipping updates. So if there were any in. UPS notices or Yeah, whatever. so I see stuff in there from, yeah, UPS, So I'm FedEx, going to create a new uh, category, uh, VIP, for stuff for my mom, let's say. But how do I then make, how do I change what's in there? Yeah, so you need to manage the category. Ah, I, I, manage actually, I'm, categories. I'm, 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 I'm confused ah. why that whole menu is So gone. I can apply a filter to that one. Yep. What you want to do is the easiest way to do this is f to find an email from your mother and say and, and then apply that category Got to it. it. It's always better to do it from example. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, unfortunately, mom has never sent me any emails, so. <laughs> if, but if I ever get one from well, her. Okay, then you could, here, you could do it. Let's say I'm going to create a new folder for, that says, if you ever get anything from Brussels Sprout Look. So, for, so I go to for this sender. Uh, schedule cleanup fine. Well, no. actually, so what I would do is select it, and then I would select go to category. What do you if you want to do? You want to now make a new rule category. category. So this is the Brussels sprout look category. So Brussels mail. Now that's a new category. Is that automatically going to make well, it? Well, so it's this isn't going to move messages, but it's going to let you view them in that filter. In other words, when you create a category, it's not going to mail. It's not going to move messages around. You need to right. create a rule to do that. Right. There's actually two different things if you think about it. Okay, the, the, I, the quick views I'm are I'm just dumb. the closest I'm sorry. that Gmail, that Hotmail or Outlook has to the sort of, um, you know, if you think about Gmail works, the way that Gmail works, it's like a database. There are no, there's only really one folder, right? right. Which is like the table in a database. Right. And that the, the sort of things we think of as folders are actually database views. And that's what those quick views are. Oh. They're literally views. They, they don't move email around. They just filter the view to show only the mails that match that category essentially this is kind of sad that Raphael has sent me an email saying i'm on tv <laughs> is, is he really lonely is there i mean Raphael, really you, you don't have to uh, i'm gonna create a new category <laughs> a new category like for Raphael's email raf mail raf mail now if i do that new category will this automatically be in that category and apply and now if I go but so, there to RAF mail, yes. Okay, good. So that was yeah. nice. But it was basically created by example. Just a view. But if you want if you want to work within the folder system, if you want to make your own folders and so forth right. for some reason, you know, some people like to do that. Right. You can create rules that will automatically route email. So I could say anything from mom goes into the mom folder or the uh, VIP yes. folder. And it, yeah, you know, like it, maybe so you have quick some views are more like the folder. library uh, folder on Windows seven is that yeah, right? yeah they're virtual they're right they're, they're virtual, virtual views they're not not actual folders and they're like labels in gmail and if somebody they sends me a exactly photo it automatically goes into the right. photo yep mail yeah some of them are automatic i don't remember off the top of my head but i want to say documents photos shipping updates and uh, maybe one other automatically get pushed into they're these grayed computers. out i think or no they're not grayed out oh that's because they have nothing in them that's why Got it, got it. Or they don't know. It's because they don't Nothing have any new. unread Nothing emails. New. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I like it. Probably won't use That's it, nice. but I like it's it. It's clean. 
Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, uh, I will use it every day. It's a lot cleaner and simpler than Gmail. I take it back. You know, I was looking at the video saying, look, it just looks this. But you know what? It is. It's much cleaner. It's much simpler than, than Gmail. But, but you know, that's really kind of the way it is well, now. That like Google and Android and Gmail, they're all about people who want lots of buttons and stuff. And uh, Microsoft's <laughs> moving more to the simple side. It's, uh, it's a weird thing. We talked about this. Uh, you know, you can look at this in Apple products. You can look at it in the Gmail stuff or the, the Google stuff rather where you, obviously you start off with this initiative where you're going to be super simple. But you have to add features and eventually it's going to get really difficult. And we I think the example we used in the past was the iPod, you know, right. that if you had started with the original iPod, it was a super simple UI. Most people could pick it up very quickly. But if you were to pick up an iPod classic, you know, seven years later, if you had never used an iPod before, you'd have no idea what was going on there. It, but by virtue of using it over the years, it was easy to make the right. transition from right. one to two to three, whatever. Right. Um, and, you know, I think that any email client, any software product is going to evolve in that fashion where, you know, you start off with a, you know, a clean slate and, and it's nice and it's simple and it's good. But you also are missing some stuff. And I, every once in a while, you know, you have to kind of just start over from scratch. And I think this was Microsoft's attempt to do that with WebMail and you know, we'll see how it takes off in the market, but I love it. I mean, I, and I love it because, you know, I've been using Hotmail and I look at this and I think, yep, this is it. This is great. Yeah, this is really nice. Hey, Paul, just do me a favor. Would you sing, I'm just a poor boy from a poor? He's <laughs> been locked. No. Doesn't he look right like he's straight out of that Queen yeah, video? I, I, yeah. either, or, or, right, or meet the Beatles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. It's Bohemian Rhapsody, Paul. Right. I'll look up. Um, like, Kind of a, Big Ginge in our chat room is asking, can you assign Yahoo or some other mail account to your Outlook.com? Or is it, oh, it's just Hotmail? So I haven't done this yet in, with an Outlook.com account. But moving over my Hotmail account, I was already using, uh, you know, the way it works in Hotmail. Is it's not as clean as it is in Gmail where because you can, it supports uh, different SMTP servers, you can send a mail as if you were another account. So from Gmail, you could do something like send a Hotmail from Hotmail. Yeah, you know, Gmail calls us is, aliases. Yeah. Yeah, we can do, yeah, I think so, you can uh, do this, can't you? And Outlook.com, they have aliases too, right? They do. But the problem, yeah. I, I haven't tested this with Outlook.com, but the problem in Hotmail was that it would say something like, uh, this mail came from Paul Throt on behalf of Hotmail.com or something like that. It would, it would have that little additional text, which, you know, for me is actually not a huge deal. I don't care that people know that I'm using Hotmail. Gmail but, did that for a long um, that, time. Apparently, that's a big deal for some people. So. I need to look at that. I'm not sure how if Outlook handles that differently, but what I can tell you that when I made the transition to Hotmail earlier this year, that was one of the questions I had because there are different ways you can aggregate email accounts. And I asked the folks from at the time Windows Live why they did this and whether they knew about this and if they were ever going to fix it. And the response was, we know about it. We know it's a problem. We are going to fix it. Um, I don't know if they fixed it for Cat, uh, Catman in our chat room says it does, uh, he's tested it. It does not show the on behalf of header. Doesn't okay. Mm -hmm. Which would go. be great. So news. that's fantastic. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. That would be great news. Yeah. Um, I don't actually think that's a huge deal for most people, frankly. No. But mm -hmm. Whatever. I, but. I'm not sure why it's a, a sticking point, but it is absolutely a sticking point for some people. People always need a reason why they can't do something. <laughs> and I think that's one of the one of the ones they use for Hotmail. You know, no, uh, Jimmy Fallon says I, it's I, a I deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah. It's a deal breaker. I think I, I, can't, I think we should I can't talk let about Windows Phone, Paul. Because hmm? oh, the, I think yes. we should talk about Windows Phone and, and moving to Outlook.com because this is something that's come up a lot in questions this week. Uh, because, you know, when Microsoft gives you pops up a little warning telling you um, you might not want to totally kill off your Hotmail address yet if this is how you signed up for a Windows Phone because all your oh. account information is tied to that. Ooh. <laughs> By the way. Ooh, well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a biggie. Yeah. Now, I use a live account, so I'm okay, right? I, t I turned my Hotmail account oh. into a Windows Live account. I, okay, so... I, but it is Leo Laporte at Hotmail.com. Unfortunately, I'm in France this week. <laughs> so it's a little hard for me to test some of this Unfortunately, stuff. Unfortunately, I'm I, playing Freddie Mercury from the band Queen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, right, I don't have a mustache. But, so, <laughs> you know, I guess the, the simplest thing you could do is you already have a, a Windows Live ID of some kind. And if it is a Hotmail type account, meaning a Hotmail.com, Live.com, MSN.com, whatever, uh, you can use this new interface without changing your email address. 
And if that Windows Live ID is important to you, if you use it for Windows Phone especially, but also for the Xbox and also for your Zoom Marketplace stuff, um, I, I don't know. I would not switch that. I would not change it. In other words, I could have, got, you know, I have Hotmail, or Throt at Hotmail.com. I, I guess I could switch over to Throt at Outlook.com, but what happens when I do that? If, if you were to write me an email at Throt at Hotmail.com and I made that switch, what would happen? I don't know. And that's one of those things I need to find out. And I've got a, an open series of questions going back and forth to Microsoft about this stuff because it, it is very confusing to people. Um, some people kind of got excited and said, oh, neat, they have Outlook.com, and they, they blew away their account, and, and who knows what happened after that. Um, so don't do that. So, Yeah, we'll see. So I, I've heard conflicting things about the Windows Live, I, or I'm sorry, the Live ID stuff on Windows Phone. So if you use Windows Phone, you know that you have a primary account that's a Windows Live ID, which not what's now called a Microsoft account. You sign on to the phone with that first, right? That will give you email, calendar, contacts, but also all the stuff you connected to your account, whatever that might be, Facebook type stuff, Twitter, Flickr, whatever. And it kind of populates the phone with all your stuff. You can only do that thing once. Right. You can't change that primary account without blowing away, uh, without hard, uh, I guess it's, I guess I guess it's a soft reset or a hard reset. You have to reset the phone. There's so no way to, to go in and change phone. it. Yep. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't want to do that for whatever reason. Wait a minute. I have to hard reset my phone. Just for You're that Erase all data, go back to the yeah. factory. It's factory reset. Yeah. Okay. But the other thing right. you, you can do is just use mail apps, apps, right? But you can still own them, right? Right. You, you don't have to Well, do I? Them. Because yeah. I'm so, even though I'm, they're attached to my Hotmail account, aren't they? Everything is attached to this account. I guess what I'm saying, for me personally, what I have is I have uh, several years of Xbox Live achievements, right? Which I actually do care about. Sure you do. I, I, I've got stuff associated with my Zune account, which I don't really care about all that much, but it's there. I mean, you know, whatever. I have a, I have a Zune Music Pass that's associated with this account. I actually happen to use my Hotmail uh, account as my primary email. So I've got an email going through there. My contacts are in there. It's, you know, it's kind of a big deal for me. So... I wouldn't, and I didn't, and I won't, not yet, personally, change this to an Outlook.com account. Maybe someday. But I need this, again, this is, it's hard for me here to do this because I'm, you know, I'm on vacation, essentially, and it's just not a good situation. But I need to look into this more, and I need to, I need to ask those questions to Microsoft, see what the responses are, whatever. But um, they do support a system of aliases. And so if you want to use an Outlook.com address, you can but you don't have to blow away your account. You can just attach it as an alias to your primary Hotmail account, oh, okay. whatever that might all be. Right, all right. And that's a completely safe thing to do. Okay. So that's what I you do want to do that. probably now. Yeah? If you're worried about it. If, if your Hotmail account is important to you, and by Hotmail, I don't just mean Hotmail.com. I mean, whatever those, they have all the live.com accounts, MSN, whatever. If it has Zoom information associated with you that you care to keep or you have uh, Xbox Live achievements like I do, if that stuff's important to you or if you've signed into your Windows phone with it, uh, do not switch to an Outlook.com account. It's just, right. I don't. I don't know exactly how awful that will be, but it's clearly awful. So <laughs> it's not the thing good. To do is, <laughs> it's not a good thing. Well, I just haven't had time to test it. I, I just. I, right. I just haven't had time. Right. I apologize for that. But um, I w my advice right now is to use aliases. And this right. Outlook.com. So you can, you can. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going. This this Outlook.com is a beta, an early. Yeah, it, it is in a preview. Yeah, right. It's a preview. So, uh, by the way, yeah, features are coming. The Skype integration is still coming. The new SkyDrive version is still coming. The uh, calendar uh, portion needs to be updated. Uh, this is stuff that's going to happen over time. And so uh, right now, it ex you know, I think the safest way to use this right now is to take your existing Windows Live ID, whatever it is, and just use the new interface. Right. And there's no reason to get an Outlook.com email address right. other than the fact that you may want one, you know, for whatever reason you want to reserve. A, well, I did. I wanted my name, right? right. Yeah. yeah, and that's fine. There's no reason not to do that, but to, I, I if you switch, do the you know, alias <laughs> first, you're okay. There, there's, there's. By the way, this I will say I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about saying this off the top of my head, but there have there has been some weirdness in the past about Windows Live IDs, where it, like, for example, one of the things I know to be a fact is that people in Europe, for example, when the Zoom first came out, wanted to access the Zoom services, but they didn't offer them in their country, so they created a Windows Live ID that was associated with the United States, uh. and then suddenly. Zoom became available in their country. And they said, neat, well, I'll switch my, my uh, account over to the UK or to the Netherlands or whatever. And it's like, uh, no, 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 you can't do that. And it looks like with the Outlook.com accounts, you can do that stuff. That if you have a, um, 
uh, an account that's registered with a, a country, you can change it. If you have an account that's registered under a certain email address, you can change it. And these are these are kind of new capabilities. Uh, the service is still in preview, and I'm on vacation, so I have a chance to test all of it. But it's clearly things are getting better. And so someone wrote you in via the chat room and said it doesn't do the on behalf of stuff. That's great news. It's that's also a change. Yep. There's there's a lot of stuff happening. So it, it's kind of early days yet. It's a, it, it's a, it's a little hard to say definitively, you know, what all the answers are. So uh, this is actually my tip or pick or whatever. But, you know, one of the things I'm going to be doing over the, the next week or so, or probably much longer than next week, is writing up um, tips about the service based on the responses I get from Microsoft about this stuff. And so these are the questions I have in, and there are more coming, and I'll, I hope to address this stuff over the next, you know, week or whatever. Um, and you said we'll there's there. going to be a Metro Outlook app, right? Outlook, yeah. Is, but that's not out yet. There's the, uh, a version uh, of Outlook coming, 2013. It's it's Metro look and feel, but it's not a true Metro style. And that's big big boy Outlook. Big yeah. boy Outlook. <laughs> <laughs> the big boy Outlook. <laughs> Just check. I would say the clo the closest analog to this web app is the Mail app in Windows 8. They're very right. similar. Right, but that's kind of uh, why I'm confused because they're well, because deprecating the Outlook. app. It's well, no, I, I mean, it's still there. I mean, you know, the, the Mail app has some advantages over Outlook.com in the sense that you can aggregate accounts without actually connecting them together. In other words, you can, you can configure it from multiple email accounts. You could use Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo, Exchange, all together without commingling them in any way, right? You're just, it's like a front end for all of them. And so that's kind of an advantage. It has some disadvantages. It doesn't do drag and drop, at least not yet. Um, you know, Outlook.com does. You know, and so they're different things. I mean, the Outlook.com is a web app, and the Mail app is a is a Metro style app, but they're, they're similar look and feel. Hey, I just want to say you mentioned Tweetro, I think a while ago. This is a sweet uh, Twitter client. Really like nice. this Metro Twitter client. Did you mention this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. No, I didn't. You didn't. Oh, no. that's Leo's pick of the week. <laughs> Leo, Leo, you don't get a pick of the week. It's my Metro app of the week, Paul. <laughs> that and Big Boy Outlook. Uh, right. <laughs> we should, I think we should also mention IMAP here because this this has come up. Does it a support lot. IMAP? Because Hotmail never did, right? No, no, it does not support IMAP right now. And um, they they also did a Reddit um, Ask Me Anything this week. The Outlook team did, and oh, neat. there they that's right. That was yeah. a great IMA. Uh, a that was that AMA. was. I and, love um, that. They, they said during that that um, they had heard the feedback and they were thinking about what to do in the future about IMAP. So they left the door open. And, you know, on the Windows 8, Building Windows 8 blog, when they talked about the live, uh, sorry, about the mail app for Windows 8, they did say they're going to do IMAP at some point. So I don't think it's out of the question that IMAP will be there. But right now their answer is anything you need to do, you should do it through Exchange Active Sync and We'll see. Because I've seen a lot of people just saying, you know, as a checkbox thing, do they have IMAP? No? Okay, I'm not going to Outlook.com. But they never had IMAP. They never did. They never had IMAP. Okay. I know. I, 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 by the way, IMAP falls into that category I was saying earlier. The reason – I'm looking for a reason not to use this. Oh, oh it doesn't one. have IMAP. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's it. one. Um, the I mean, I understand that. I use IMAP and I want IMAP, but I've never used Hotmail because they didn't have IMAP. <laughs> Okay. So you're one well, of those people. Well, but I, but that, but I, but I mean, I'm saying if you were using Hotmail, yeah, they right. can't very the well say, nice. well, Outlook doesn't have IMAP. That's it. No. Actually, Leo, you I might think this was more Gmail this. people, Gmail people who are looking for. Well, a I, well not okay, well, it, that that's a legitimate reason. IMAP is uh, is the way to use email. Pop is very old school, or yeah. it's not even Pop. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just the way to use email. It's, but it's web. I, I I think I think the push stuff in Exchange Active Sync makes more sense than IMAP. But it, it IMAP is certainly close it's a lot better than you know the pop stuff or whatever but right. um so uh, the rtm version of the mail app in windows 8 does support imap by the way um that wasn't the case in the release preview uh, yeah. um i i don't know anything about them supporting imap in the in the outlook.com i would never really discuss that but um i i think and we should say big boy outlook of course supports imap <laughs> oh yes yeah, yeah absolutely there's no <laughs> question yeah. Yeah, kitchen Big sink is what that thing is. Um, I'm curious. I, my understanding was that the mail app in uh, OS X was an IMAP client, but you cannot access Hotmail or Outlook.com via 
I'm sorry, not I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Exchange Active Sync Client. You cannot access Hotmail or Outlook.com through the mail app using EAS Exchange Active Sync. Um, I, that to me is like kind of the fundamental frontier for Microsoft because the Exchange Active Sync stuff works basically everywhere else, right? It works on the iOS devices. It works on Android. In fact, there's a Hotmail app on Android. It works on um, obviously Windows RT in the mail app. It works in Outlook. Uh, Outlook 2013 supports EAS na uh, natively, but not in the mail app in OS 10, including o OS 10 Mountain Lion. So uh, th that is, the, I think, the one sticking point for this client, or for this uh, service, rather, where th that's the one audience that really can't access this in an elegant way. And I think that's the, maybe the, the only legitimate reason you'd need IMAP and right. Outlook.com that I can think of. Right. Shall we move but do you on? know? I mean, I, I, my well, no. I mean, do you know? Does OS 10 Mail? I thought OS 10 Mail was an IMAP. I'm sorry, uh, was an EAS client. I think it is. is I don't use that it that way, so I'm not. I'm not sure. Let me. But it does not. Know. But I know that it does not work with Hotmail and Outlook.com. I think that's it that's not that's the case. But Hot, Hotmail uh, always. I don't know. Didn't it always require some sort of weird plugin? I don't know. Let me see if I can. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I, I mean, don't it's, know. It's, it's the one thing that does not work. Yeah. Um, let me save that and go here and try this. I want to use an exchange. Yeah, no, I've already done it. It doesn't this. work. It doesn't work. Okay. And you can, put, you can put in the manual. You can There's a manual approach you can do in, in uh, Mountain Lion where you can specify the server name and all that stuff. Still doesn't work. It's m.hotmail.com. It does not work. It okay. just doesn't work. Okay. And I don't, yeah, I don't know why. Okay. MacMail is EAS, says enjoy February in our chat room. All right, but here's but the thing. But not so Hotmail. Makes EAS, but not Hotmail. So Microsoft makes EAS. They make Hotmail. Uh, OS X is EAS. <laughs> right? But Hotmail is um, not. Why, why does it not work? I don't know. Well, maybe it's not pure EAS. I, I have to think that the Microsoft one would... You'd think it would be, be Exchange. Yeah. Is it Exchange <laughs> Active Sync? Is that what EAS stands yes. for? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, a bunch of people on Twitter, by the way, are saying they have changed their accounts to Outlook.com. They've reinstalled their apps on their phone. They've reinstalled text, game achievements and all, oh, and they're cow. happy. But you should just know you, just should, a lot of work. you should expect that. Yeah, just yes. be ready for a lot of work. Uh, okay, shall we move along, ladies and germs? Um, we've got uh, new keyboards and mice. We had heard some rumors. They are official. Yes. <laughs> Those weird wedge mice that we that saw was images real. of. They Those were real. real. Yep. yep. But uh, you know what's funny? When we saw the pictures of them, they're actually upside down in the picture. Ah, uh, so, so that's confusing. Right. So it's not that your wrist is low <laughs> and your fingers are high. It, you use it the opposite way. Ah. Uh. So that your wrist is like right. hanging down over the edge of the wedge. If I can explain that <laughs> if any more unclearly, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's all about the edge of the wedge. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, <laughs> it is about the edge of the wedge. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> I, I, I'm obviously it's exciting anytime Microsoft does this, and it, obviously they support the gestures, and you know the keyboards have the the Windows 8 keys, and you know that's all very exciting. But you know, I there's a there's a weird movement at Microsoft with their hardware where the keyboards and mice are not ergonomically sound, and I'm I'm really nervous about this stuff. You know the uh, the new version of that, uh, not the wedge keyboard, but the other keyboard is is basically uh, the keyboard I have here. Like a, it's like a Bluetooth keyboard, and it's a it's called the Microsoft Bluetooth Mobile Keyboard 6000. This thing is horrible. It's like one of the worst keyboards ever made, which is why I travel with it. But it's um. It's just a terrible keyboard, and you know, uh, I, I, the you know the the Microsoft like the Explorer Touch Mouse and the and the the touch thing they have and the Arc Mice and all that stuff. They're just like these ergonomic disasters, you know. And I'm I'm just nervous that these things follow in the path of that. Like the mouse you're looking at right there, the, the Sculpt the Sculpt Touch, touch mouse, mouse. That's the new version of the Explorer Touch Mouse. That's all that is. It's just a it's a 2.0 version of an existing mouse. Yeah. Um, the wedge stuff is brand new. And you know, like that thing, it's cool looking. I it's, mean, a blue, no it's a Bluetooth it. uh, wireless, yeah, mobile. I'm keyboard. nervous about this stuff. I, I don't feel like they've ever done a good job with this. You know, there's no wrist rest on this thing. This is the one that's just uh, bizarre. Bizarre. Yeah. This is the it's, Microsoft it's a wedge for, touch form mouse. of a function. Yeah. 
Yeah. Stylish, this compact the, frame that's great for your... So, um, again, ref, tell me where my wrist hangs over. What? On the it's back. Like you would be... Yeah, it's not the way it, you're facing this picture. It's so the other way. The, the, point, or the mouse is pointing towards the low end of the wedge. So it's like... Yes. So it's like, yeah. let's say you have a Christmas ham. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The stuffing the would problem. go in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're saying my hand is 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 raised yes. the, the, the top the high part of the wedge is under my wrist, and then I'm clicking right. in a downward motion. Is that ergonomic in some interesting way that I've never heard of? I don't think so, but it is cool looking. <laughs> it's also you know, not. It's, by the it's, way, it's, it's not a multi-touch mouse. That is not. Oh, this is not it's their not special super duper uh, gesture mouse. No. Oh no. I agree with Paul, yeah. though, on, on the other mice. Like, the arc mouse looks so cool, how you can snap it down and everything. But then when so, I tried uh, to fix it, eh. <laughs> I, uh, let me, uh, if you What's can, the uh, angle of the dangle? That's my question. Is it? it so let, just, just, I guess we throw, can't tell till we throw, touch it. I, I actually travel with a, uh, a very big mouse. It's the Microsoft Explorer. I love that mouse. Actually, That's actually a great mouse. Yeah, and the reason I... Explorer mouse. It's like the Blue Track Explorer yeah, mouse. Yeah. The, reason I, the, the reason I bring it is because... It's huge, right? And I think that that's the key for ergonomics with a mouse. And the reason I think that is because years ago, uh, before I used an ergonomic keyboard and a large mouse, I used different pointing devices. And, you know, you get that kind of soreness in the back of your wrist, you yeah, know. Yeah. And uh, the combination of this mouse and a truly ergonomic keyboard have kind of solved those problems. And if I spend too much time on a laptop, like I'm going to on this trip, or uh, I spend too much time using like a trackpad, which I could do on this trip, but I bring the mouse. You know, I, I feel that you can feel it coming back, you know. And and these mice, I mean, they're kind of cool looking. They've made some really nice looking mice over the last couple of years, like those arc mice, uh, the touch mouse and all that. They're, they're cool looking, but I, I really don't think they're uh, correct ergonomically. And I'm just, I'm worried about that kind of Apple style form over function thing. You By know? the way, I got a with... very interesting uh, message when I went to this Microsoft site showing, the news center showing these in the Metro version of Explorer. I got a message okay. saying, this site requires plugins that use that are only available for the desktop version of Internet Explorer. Please switch to desktop. <laughs> yes, yes, yep. yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and so is that going to be, we're going to see that? <laughs> oh, yes. Enjoy. And by the way, those plugins are probably <laughs> Silverlight. <laughs> yep. yep. It's yep. Silverlight. And, yeah. Yeah. And who makes Silverlight? Remind me. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Why isn't that built into the Metro version of IE? It's, well, because... Okay. <laughs> because they hate Silver Light is. I have to say, I was on the I was on the Metro version of it, and it all seemed to work just fine. But I don't. Yep. 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 Technology uh, non grata. Technology. It wasn't. Non -grata. Uh, See, yeah. I think regular users go. Well, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm confused. I. It's the same computer. It's the same hard drive. The the code is on the hard drive. It works in the Internet Explorer on the desktop, which looks identical in every respect to the Metro version of Internet Explorer. A, why do you have two versions of Explorer on the same operating system? And B, if you do, why do you require me to use one over the other? These are valid questions, Leo. <laughs> they all are great questions. <laughs> These are excellent, I don't want excellent to be questions. seen as a, as a negative Nelly here. I'm just asking. You're not the only one who's asked those questions. <laughs> okay. yeah. Maybe that'll change. This, I, I'm using I, a beta version. This is not the... Yeah, maybe. This maybe, not. maybe not. <laughs> maybe. Maybe in Windows 9. Yeah. Windows I have to 9, say, the more I... Just, just to redeem myself, the more I'm using Windows 8, the more I'm liking it. Even on the desktop. Yeah. It is, yeah. It is kind of growing on me. I actually... I mean, I, I realize this is uh, not popular in the blogosphere these days, but I really like Windows 8. Yeah, Windows it's desktop. actually growing on me. Yeah. I'm har I find that hard to believe. Almost horrifying. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Well, it's like a, uh, it's like a, a fierce reduction in re, in reflection and transparency. You know, like I, I kind of uh, I kind of enjoy. I that. shouldn't I, be liking uh, this. Yeah, we. I neglected to mention that, that there is SkyDrive integration into Outlook. dot com. Yes, um, and they're going to reimagine cloud storage. So I, I was, I, you know, I was a little confused in this. I when I talked to these guys, uh, I got access to the new SkyDrive. I the way they described it to me was that they would have held off on this a little longer, but it, you know they needed to put it in there because there were integration bits and so forth. Um, 
apparently people who are signing up for Outlook.com today are getting the old version of SkyDrive, not the new version. So I asked them about that, and they said that uh, next couple of weeks um, you would get the new version. Hmm. So what you're looking at there is the... This is this the old version? Well, I think you were looking at the Windows 8 app. Yeah, I was looking at the Metro SkyDrive. So the, yeah. on, on the web... Uh, it looks like the old website, but soon it's going to look like the Windows 8 app. Okay, so I have that. This is the new version, but it's on because I'm using Windows it 8 would, Metro. It will look like this. Look like this. No, no, yeah, well, no. On the what web, you have is like the, what you're looking at is the Windows 8 app. It will look like this on the web. Yeah. Right. You know, I was talking, so it's the, funny, I was talking to uh, Jeffrey Zeldman, who is uh, the Blue Beanie guy, the web, web standards guy yesterday on Triangulation. And, I know exactly who Jeffrey Zeldman is. Oh, he's wonderful. And he's a designer. <laughs> he's an artist. He really has a great eye. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about how Apple's moving more towards these leather-stitched, skeuomorphic designs. Ugh, and how Microsoft is kind of, I think, saying the new standard is going to be clean, no drop shadows, no rounded corners, just crisp, simple, direct. By the way, it, it is the type of stuff that you could create with CS, CSS. Totally. Well, you could do rounded corners right. with CSS now, too, but which no, is but, what he I said. Mean, uh, sure. But it's icon graphic. You know, it, it's not uh, – it's, it's digital – it, it is kind of true to itself it's, in that sense. It is it's true not, to digital, and that's the complaint about skeuomorphic design. It's like saying, well, you probably don't like digital technology, so we're going to make it look like stitched leather and uh, real, but real I would, See, I would, I would take it down a notch intellectually and just say the, the majority of the people who are using, say, I, iCal on Mac OS X yeah. have never seen a paper calendar ever. Right. So <laughs> why so make it look like that? Making it look like that is meaningless to them. And it what would be he like liked, designing a podcast app that looks like a Victrola. And what he you know, likes, and, and I really like, is the fact that these tiles no longer are. You know, he said on the iPhone, the tiles say this is what the app is. It's the app icon. On uh, on Windows Phone and also on Windows Eight, these tiles have content. Admittedly, it's right. not all the content, but the content tells you what you're going to be looking at. You know, these are my friends. These are my pictures. Well, by the way, it's, it's even a step beyond that, I would say. In some cases, it tells you all you need to know, and you don't have to go to the app. Yeah, in the case of you know, weather, it's 61 degrees. I know it's right. you know sunny. There's no reason to open the weather app. Yeah. Or my next appointment is, oh, yeah, it's that thing. Yeah, I, I like there's this. No, there's no need to load. Exactly. Right. I really exactly. like this. I do, too. Um, and I do think that this, this is more modern. This has always been the strength of Windows Phone. Yes. Yes. And I guess that's the point, is it's more modern. Yeah, it's literally the point. Yeah. And I'm it, and I, boy, God, I hate to admit it's growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you yet. Curse you, Paul, the rotten Mary Joe Foley. Did you like <laughs> surface today, like iPad today? Maybe like a, like a Peter Cushing vampire movie. Maybe you know? I will. You know, I'm absolutely, of course, going to buy a Surface, both the Windows RT version and when the Pro version comes out three months later, I'll get that too. And uh, I'm very intrigued. Sure. Yep. Very intrigued. Good. Good to hear, Neil. Uh, now I've He's got you it. right where we want you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I, you know, I was one of those people and, uh, who really thought that this was going to be a disaster. Could could well be a disaster for Microsoft. Um, mm -hmm. and I it's, think I used that word, actually. Yeah, and it's still unclear. <laughs> and maybe in business it will be. I don't know. It's still unclear. But I have to say, as somebody who's who's just kind of started using it, um, it's grown. It's grown a lot on me, much more than I thought it you would. Know, I, I, I keep uh, hedging my bets on this one, but I, I think the way I look at this is, uh, and we've talked about this a little bit in the past, was you know this notion of what makes it successful and all that kind of stuff. And I, I, I sort of think you know, just looking at PCs, just computers, like actual traditional computers, I, there's no way that this is going to be as big of a deal as Windows Seven. But I, I think the thing that puts it over the top is these devices, you know? Right. And that when you look at it that way, it, it's not it's, – it's weird because it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. But because you've expanded Windows out to this broad new market, right, where it's, it's suddenly not hundreds of millions or, – or, well, I would say it's not 350 million devices a year. It's like 500, 600 more, you know, maybe. Um, the potential there is much greater. And so overall – it's actually possible that this thing will be more successful than Windows 7. And that's kind of a, that's an out there thing to say. You know, there's so much controversy around Windows 7. But I, I think the addition of all these device types is what is going to put it over the top. The trick, if I'm going to use myself in his example, the trick will be get to get people to try it and use it for a bit of time. Because it is very different. People resist change. But, it, but sure. I, I notice in myself, and Paul, you observed this a few weeks ago. That after yep. using it for, let's say, a few weeks, 
it actually grows on you. And I'm and I think that this will be the general experience. But how do you get people to <laughs> try it? Well, and uh, there's the the kind of side effect uh, thing where, you know, maybe uh, you've sort of thought, well, I could use an iPad or perhaps a an Android device for like ninety percent of what I do. You know, but now you can get this Windows RT tablet and on the same device. Mm switch over occasionally to the desktop to Word or Excel I previously would have required switching to a different device right. if you had been using one of the alternative devices. Right. That may be a big deal for a lot of people. That could be a selling point. I know, you know, I look at uh, Lisa, who is basically our financial person. She uses Excel all the time. I watch her mm -hmm. frust in frustration using Excel on the Mac because the keys are different. If she had something... <laughs> that would allow her a tablet she loves the ipad if she had something that would give her sure. the features of a tablet but give her access to excel in a way that she could really use it that might very well be a compelling uh selling point for her and i think there's a lot that's that's yeah. the business that's the business use case so that'll be very interesting to see right yeah <laughs> mary joe's still mary in the joe's disaster not. camp <laughs> Business users. She's like, or, like <laughs> <laughs> or disaster, <laughs> Titanic. No, and, and you know, I, I did say disaster. In fact, I said it when I was on the the Verge show. I, I how did that go? I, it went great. What fun! Um, I, we can yeah, watch we it now fun. with uh, yep, Mary Joe and Josh. But you know, I, I I made it clear there, and I, I've repeated it since that I I thought Windows Eight would be a disaster until I saw the the surface. I think you need to see hardware that's made for this I operating agree. system. Yes. Right? <laughs> and I have and said that. I have it, argued that people should not should not buy a Windows 7 machine now and with the $15 upgrade because that's not what you want. You want a Windows no, and you're not 8. You're a great experience. Yeah, you want a Windows 8 purpose-built machine. Right. I I'm, I'm convinced well, of that. At least the keyboard. So you got charms. I want a charms yeah. key. <laughs> Lucky charms. <laughs> Let's quickly, we're running out of time. Microsoft's 10K filing to the SAC, SEC, the, strate the Strategic Air Command. Um, what do we, what do we, have, have, do we learn anything? I think your point, Paul, is that we, you, this is stuff we already know. Well, yes. I, I just, you know, it's, it's kind of a closet thing. Like these people are like, you can always tell when someone's new to blogging. It's like, I have completely figured out the <laughs> secret behind blogging. It's like a, companies every year release this 10K SEC filing, and that's where the real information Nobody is. Nobody reads that, but I have done the research. And, and, the, and the theory is that, uh, that co public companies like Microsoft um, don't ever tell the truth in real life, and that w when they have to file this 10K SEC filing, that, that's where they tell the truth. Right. And actually, I, I just want to be the first to inform those people. That's not how this works. Um, those things, they have to put in these caveats legally because that's required. Th that doesn't mean that this represents Microsoft's true feeling. It means that Microsoft is meeting the requirements of the filing. In other words, Microsoft, if you were to go to the Windows division and say, hey, you know, do you think you're going to have any, uh, the surface is going to cause any hard feelings? You'd probably hear, uh, no, not really. No, I don't. But f faced with an, uh, a 10K SEC filing, the, same, uh, the people responsible for that would say, well, unfortunately, it's our legal responsibility to say that this is a possibility. It may be remote, but we have to mention it. That's how these filings work. Um, we, you know, micro if you were to say to Microsoft, who are your primary competitors? They would probably say Apple and Google in their SEC filing. Surprise, surprise, they say Apple and Google. I mean, <laughs> really? There's, there's really not a lot going on. In other words, like, a lot of this stuff is like so no-brainer, right. it's almost stupid. Right. But again, it's like an intelligence test. It's like you, you can tell who's not paying attention by how excited they get by the SEC filing. So whatever. Uh, you know, 75% of Windows division revenues come from Windows bundled on new PCs. A shocker. You know, like really, that's an amazing fact. 75% uh, of server revenues come from volume licensing, not from people buying server in a retail store. Shocking. <laughs> you know, like none of this stuff is actually shocking, you know. Right. That Microsoft would be, you know, like forced to admit that, you know, the Surface PC is going to compete with products from their PC maker partners. Like, duh. Yeah, but but, I mean, no, like, but they like, never it's, said it's, that before. So having them say that gives, you know, I mean. But it's just. But see, we it's knew it. A it. It's a fact. It's right. not a. It's not an opinion. It's just a fact. Right. It, may, it will compete with those products. Of right. course it will. Of course it will. So Microsoft obvious. is. Yeah. 
is entering a market in which they will now compete with their partners. Duh. <laughs> you know, this isn't like Microsoft admitting it. This is just like a legal requirement of, a, of this SEC filing. It's you know what it's it. like? It's like when you buy a house. I don't know if it, how it is in Massachusetts and New York, but when you buy a house in California, there's a disclosure form that comes along with a house. Yeah. In which you're supposed to yep. say all the things like, well, there was a murder here in 1983. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. The neighbors, that was my house, actually. Yeah, the neighbors <laughs> next door uh, play music really loud. And you're supposed to say all that stuff. They're, yeah. And that's what, the, that's what this 10K is, basically. It's the disclosure. It, 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 you have to figure out the worst case scenario and report it. Yeah. Even if this is not what they believe it's going to happen. You know, they have to. It, it's, it, is it surprising that devices from Apple and Google are a challenge for Microsoft. Right. I mean, is this, I mean, is this, I'm sorry, is this a headline of some kind? I mean, this is all, every, all of this stuff to me is extremely obvious. But they are and required as a public company to do it. And I, I think the reason it's the law is because the presumption is, well, some investors, uh, right. <laughs> for some reason may not know this. So they should know all of the well, pros and cons. By the way, if they don't report this stuff, right? And the proliferation of Google and, and Apple devices somehow cuts into the market share of Windows. Uh, shareholders can sue them, right? <laughs> right. But now by saying it, right, they've protected themselves. They're right? off. So that's the all hook. this is. They're this off is, the hook. Is, no, there is really not a lot of news in this thing, and I, I, I hate to take such a cynical approach to it, but it's like this is not something new. This these filings, they were not invented two years ago. Right. This is <laughs> something right. they make every year. Right. I mean, this is. You know, and every year, this uh, like these big stories, like oh, I've complete like I figured out the Rubicon. Right. Uh, here's how it works. You know, <laughs> listen, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> it's all in the 10K SEC filing. This is brand new information you'll never find anywhere else. You know, it's like uh, it's not really like that. I've so given up mm -hmm. on uh, bloggers. I mean, I love blogs, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are bloggers, uh, and yeah. good bloggers <laughs> are really sure. pushing the envelope of great journalism. They're doing good stuff. But there's so many people who are link baiting, who are lazy. I mean, anybody can have a blog. So yep. uh, there's, you know, but that's the way it is in the new world of media is anybody can have a show. Anybody can have a blog. And you, and now, yep. oh, gosh, I have to decide who's good or bad. Oh, yes, you do. Microsoft, uh, uh, Leo, would you describe Microsoft's move to cloud-based service? I think it's a revelation. It's risky. Or it's not a risky. revelation. It's risky as hell. <laughs> you know, like, I, mean, I don't know. Right. Uh, right. Da, da, da. <laughs> um, now, there was a leak of the Windows 8 SDK. I'm sure, Paul, we were looking with great interest at this. Anything that we know? The, actually, it's Mary Jo's story. Yeah. The phone. The phone SDK. Yeah. 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 The, it's been interesting to see... So the SDK leaked a week ago or so, and it's been interesting to see people really combing through all the files and the and the yeah. release notes and everything. And the one the one thing that kept coming back, and I kept getting questions on, and people were just were kind of going back and forth about on Twitter was, um, so does the SDK tell you XNA is supported or not supported with Windows Phone 8? So XNA is the framework that gamers use to develop casual and other kinds of games. For, Originally for uh, Xbox, past, right? in the past for Xbox, for Windows, for M, for Windows Phone. And, yep. um, you know, Microsoft had, had basically been indicating that XNA would be supported on Windows Phone 8. And uh, people who had looked closely at the SDK said, I'm not so sure that's actually true. Um, and so mm. Microsoft still is not commenting on this because they don't want to comment on leaked code. They're saying, you'll know whenever we get the SDK out there, whenever that will be. <laughs> it's still not out well. yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could probably but, <laughs> answer this one. <laughs> but well, they, I but, mean, do you not? So I'll tell you what, what people have told yep. me. So there's like, uh, there seems to be like a quirks mode for Windows Phone. So if you write a, Win a Windows Phone app targeting Windows Phone 7 with XNA, it'll run on Windows Phone 8. The only thing is if you want to target any of the specific new features that are in Windows Phone 8, you can't do it with XNA is what people are saying. And Microsoft won't comment okay. on that. No, that's right. That's correct. You got yeah. to remember that every single Xbox Live game written on Windows Phone today is XNA. Every single one of them. There's, there's no way that they're going to allow those games not to run in Windows Phone 8. So obviously XNA is supported in Windows Phone 8. The question is whether using the Windows Phone 8 SDK, you can create new XNA titles. Right. Uh, the, the way forward for games um, on Windows Phone 8 is DirectX. It's native code. It's 
code that will work uh, by and large with on Windows 8 as well, which is a big deal. It's code that is easily transported to and from iOS and Android uh, with uh, Windows Phone. So that's the future. But XNA is not a first-class citizen moving forward. It's like a legacy set of APIs. It's the past, I think would be yep. the way to say it. Cool. Yeah. All right. But yeah, if you're if you're wondering where is the SDK, we don't know. The rumor was it's, <laughs> it's in China. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's in China. It's Actually, China. what I'm wondering is where can I get a, a copy of the RTM? Yeah, well, it's good. that's that's some time away. So the oh come on, it's so, got to be on the BitTorrents, right? No, 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 no. It's not. Yeah. This is still beta. So sometime in the right. weeks ahead, we're gonna in days ahead, tomorrow. I don't. Who knows? You know, they'll release this thing or something close to it for the public to see and use. And they will and RTM start. really. No, no, no. Only, only the, 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 the beta SDK. version of the SDK. Oh, the SDK. I'm talking about yeah. the RTM yeah. of Windows 8. That's another matter entirely. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, oh, that's going to oh. happen, uh, by the way, uh, within, <laughs> within by the way, seconds. Within days. <laughs> you know, literally, yeah. uh, it's, yeah. that's, it's on the way. It's, it is on the way. But uh, window, back to Windows Phone 8. Yes. Where, uh, we were trying to. Um, so the, the SDK is still not out. No word from Microsoft when it's coming out. was supposed to be July. Uh, not out yet. But the operating system, the Windows Phone 8 operating system, is rumored to be RTMing in September. So, you know, developers are getting a little agitated because they're like, hey, I want to write some Windows Phone 8 sure. custom apps. Sure. But I can't because the SDK isn't out. Yeah. Right. I'm a little freaked by how quick this thing is coming to market. I mean, so without fast. any beta SDK, you know, it, it, it's weird how soon this is happening. I, I think there's a case to be made that when you look at the schedule for Windows 8, Obviously, heavy development over the past year, multiple releases of the SDK, a chance to provide feedback to Microsoft. Fine. Windows 8? It's like, what, what are you kidding me? What, do we got 30 days? I mean, do you really think that anyone is going to be able to provide any meaningful f feedback that will impact the SDK with, right. with less than a month between the release of the beta and the final version of the SDK? I mean, uh, they clearly have a very strong idea of what they're doing for this release, and, and we're not part of it. But... Um, they you know, we'll see how that goes. I mean, I, I think there's also yeah. great. You know, they, they, <laughs> so, I know. They, yeah. So, like, I, I saw some people say this on Twitter yesterday um, that, you know, people were complaining about this again. And, and somebody from Microsoft said, you know, we are testing this in-house. So they're testing it among their different divisions, like Skype is testing it and all. But, you know, third sure. parties outside. No, 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 no problems are ever shown up when you uh, introduce it to a bigger group. So this won't be a problem. Right. Exactly. But, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> Windows 8 is on this kind of weird, well, they're on a yearly schedule, which is kind of nice. Yeah. But the, the thing is, when you move from 7.5 to 8, we're, this is a completely different operating system. I mean, yeah. uh, there are a lot of questions here about what the features are and, uh, you know, what the SDK makeup is going to be and all that. So um, we'll see what that looks like. But it's, man, this thing is barreling toward completion. And no one has seen it really on the record yet, uh, at least not any big groups of people, you know, publicly, certainly. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see. But it's going to happen quick. Email from Bob who says, you are biased, Leo. All you use is Apple Gear. Where's the proof you use Windows? Right here, my friend, right here. When I'm saying hello <laughs> to the Windows 8 interface, and uh, we're going to take a look a little bit right now, take a break, talk about... Audible.com, then our tips and software of the week. If I weren't using Windows, could I do that? I don't think so. Let's talk about Audible.com. Audible is, of course, the great bookstore where there are hundreds of thousands of titles. Uh, everything from fiction, history, thrillers. I'm doing the... Uh, the first books, F-U-R-S-T, that you recommended, Paul. I'm starting with Night Soldiers. I'm going to read them all, one after another. But you say there's a really good book. Yep. Oh, Anne Hathaway reading The Wizard of Oz. Wow. I love her. I just saw the Batman movie last night. She's my, <laughs> she's, she's my new girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. By the way, don't get me started on that. Yeah, that, that I understand. But that movie was a train wreck. But I'll... That's a different story. <laughs> we'll get your review later. <laughs> um, I'm interested to hear, um, hear what, you, what you think about it. I'm glad I, I'm glad I saw the movie, though, before that, because I don't want any spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. But Anne Hathaway, I don't care about the Catwoman suit. I'm just saying she's no, no a one nice yeah. kid. I, yep, I got you. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. So uh, Audible.com. You got a good pick for us, Paul? <laughs> Anyone listening to this podcast has probably heard of Daniel Suarez, right? Oh, yeah. Um, We're interviewing him Wednesday uh, on Triangulation, by the way. 
excellent. Yeah. Um, I'd love to meet this guy. Uh, you know, his first two books were among the best books I've ever read in my life. Absolutely. Right. And, and they, they followed Demon, Demon and Freedom. And, uh, freedom. Yep. So Freedom TM was a sequel to uh, Demon and Demon was so amazing. I remember when the second book came out, I thought to myself, there's no way this is ever going to live up to the first one. And <laughs> it, it just did. took it and blew it out of the water. It was like a, a times 100 kind of sequel. It was amazing. So his third book is just out. It came out in uh, print and uh, kind of Kindle form a couple weeks ago. And now this week it's out in Audible. You know, it's, it's so funny, Kill Paul, Decision. because I've had that book. He sent me an early release and I didn't want to read it for the same reason. I thought this can't possibly live up to Demon and Freedom. Right. Tell me it's a good so book. I'm not... Yeah, it is a good book. I'm not done with it. Um, I, so this is this book has kind of ruined my schedule. I, I had plans for what I was going to be reading on this trip, and this book came out, and it's just too it's too good to put down. So oh, I'm, I'm so excited! Only about a third of the way into it, it's a completely different story. It's the the premise, the setup, and I don't think I'm killing anything to say this is that basically, you know, the United States is doing these drone warfare things in the in the Far East and or in the Middle East rather, and. Uh, <clears throat> somebody takes over, you know, you, you, if you've read Daniel Suarez, you understand it's basically a kind of a Michael Crichton style, you know, technology takes over yeah, kind of a yeah. thing. That's what happens. And so one of the drones takes out some uh, religious mosque while the people controlling the other drones are looking on. And of course, everyone blames the United States and hilarity ensues. And you can kind of see where it goes from there. But wait. Oh, I'm um, so excited. It's just fantastic stuff. And it, it, I don't know what to call this kind of a book. And, 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 and I would put his other books in the same category. Like, what do you call this? It's like, believable computer science fiction. You know, in other words, anyone who knows too much about any topic, read a book or see a movie, and if it's about the topic they too, know too much about, it ruins it for them because they right. can see all the places where they got it wrong. The, these books get everything right. That's uh, why Mark I love his stuff. Like, this guy, I mean, Daniel was a programmer. Yeah. He knows tech. It's plausible. Yeah. And that's what's scary about it. And so, you know, Demon and Freedom were both this situation where you're reading this, you're thinking, this is far out and it's crazy, but right. you know what? Like this, could happen. This is this was well it thought out. Happen. I mean, and this is the same thing, but uh, applied to this. Uh, and the same guy, Jeff Gurner, reads it. He did such a good job with uh, Demon and Freedom. Yeah. I'm glad to hear him come back. Um, I Good. So, the, and yeah. I've been told, by the way, that the Audible version is the way to read it. It's apparently a very good read or listen, I should say. So here, this could be free for you. If you're not yet an Audible member, go to audible.com slash windows. Sign up. You'll be signed up for the gold account. That's a book a month. But your first month is free. Your first credit's free. You can use that credit uh, for this book. Cancel it any time. The book will be yours to keep forever. That's one of the things I like about <laughs> Audible. If you have a Windows phone or an iOS or Android device, the Audible yep. apps have your entire library that you have everything you've ever listened to. And you can listen again. And with books, that's not unusual that you want to reread a book. Re-listen. Listening to Audible is great whether you've got a long commute or you work out. I listen, uh, you know, anytime I can't hold a book, even at home when I'm cleaning, I love to listen. Audible.com slash Windows. Try it today. You will love it. Paul Therott, Mary Joe Foley. Let's get to our tips of the week. Starting with you, Paul. Yeah, the pick and the tip are uh, commingled and, and, pick and we're tip. kind of, kind of. Uh, it's not a <laughs> pick, it's really. a tip. It's both a pick and a tip. <laughs> so the the pick is Outlook.com. I think this is uh, yeah, actually a major change. And I, I think it's a big deal mostly for people who <laughs> weren't using uh, Hotmail, which is probably a lot of people. Um, a lot of the stuff that's awesome about Outlook.com was already in Hotmail. You just don't know about it. And now it looks pretty. And now it does, is not called Hotmail. And I think that's going to pull a lot of people over. So if you're using Windows, uh, this is something you need to check out. And by the way, even if you're using um, Outlook.com, I'm sorry, uh, you know, Gmail or some other service, um, you know, you need a Microsoft account, period. And switching over to an outlook.com for that kind of stuff wouldn't be uh, a bad idea. I, did you I say did. idea? I, I did. I'm idea. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try so hard. Not to <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Busted. All right. No, just teasing. No, no, I liked it. It was good. It was good. So, so uh, it, it's... I really just think that this thing is great. And I've been using, you know, like I said, Hotmail for months and months uh, as my primary email account. And moving to this thing has just been fantastic. I love it. I just, I really, really love it. So, so it's both a tip. And by the way, the tip is to do it right, uh, especially well, if you're a Windows phone user. So, 
there are many, many questions around how you migrate or switch over, you know, port your stuff over, uh, with, you know, connecting accounts, using aliases, all that kind of stuff. And so over the next, it's probably going to be more than a week. It's going to be at least 10 days, two weeks, whatever. I'm going to have a, an Outlook.com uh, tip every day. A lot of it's going to be based on feedback I get from Microsoft, based on the questions I've gotten, uh, based on some of the issues we raised earlier that I just really don't know the answers to quite yet or I'm not confident in them. I want to make sure I've got it right. Um, and I'm going to be posting about that stuff. So the first couple of tips are kind of um, uh, basic. Uh, you're switching from Gmail kind of stuff. How do I deal? I like this about Gmail. How do I do that on Hotmail? Uh, I'm sorry, on Outlook.com. You know, here's how that kind of stuff. But as we move through this next, uh, you know, week or two, uh, I'm going to be switching over to some of the more hardcore topics around, you know, migrating. I have a Hotmail.com. I want to migrate. What are the pros and cons? How do I do it? How do I do it right? That kind of stuff. And so I'm going to hit all those topics. Um, and so just uh, kind of stay tuned to that stuff. Excellent. Mary Jo, you have an enterprise pick of the week? I do. Um, so we, you know, whenever we talk about Office 365, we always talk about Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and Link Online. But little did we know, well, we actually did know, but Microsoft didn't confirm it till now. But little did we know, Project Online is a new member of that family. So if you know Microsoft Project, mm -hmm. which is their project management product, they're taking it and bringing it to the cloud, hmm. which is pretty crazy. And they're integrating it with SharePoint Online and Link Online. So you'll be able to, to use these products across the entire suite together. You'll be able to just get Project Online by itself, I believe. Um, this will is there be a desktop version? Will there be a still a, a download you know, will. installable yep. version? Okay. But I think it's it makes still. sense because this is where all CRM is moving. I mean, this is in response to Salesforce and everybody else. This is you got to do it online, right? Yeah, I mean, they already got they've got CRM online. That's already part, kind of part of the suite for Office 365. Right. It's an, a, an additional thing you can pull in. But Project Online, you know, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, they're never going to bring Project to the cloud. Why would they?" But right. it makes sense. In oh a no, lot no, of ways. totally and, does. Projects yeah, are often totally managed uh, with virtual teams and. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So yeah, a lot, a lot of people who um, have been asking for that will be happy to see the beta bits are out now. The customer pre preview, it's part of Office. Wave 15, and it will be coming out when the rest of that suite does, which supposedly could RTM this year. Now, instead of a uh, enterprise uh, code name of the week, we've got a rumor of the week, which is a very interesting rumor. It is a very interesting rumor, and um, it's that Microsoft is starting to move towards asking people not to use the word Metro what? anymore. What? Yeah, it's this is... <laughs> This is really weird, right? Because they, they have been the ones out there really beating the Metro band, you know, talking about we have the Metro design language, the Metro design framework and all. And now uh, in the past couple of days, I started hearing people saying, are you hearing Microsoft doesn't want us to say the word Metro anymore? Um, and so I asked for a statement and today they gave me a statement saying that, yes, we considered Metro style to be a code name. I didn't know that was a code name. I thought that was actually how they were referring to Windows. Metro uh, sorry, Windows. is a code name. Uh, I didn't know that. But yeah, so they're, wow. they're trying to get people to, to use the real product names instead, they said. But what is the real product name? It's not. Well. Uh, some of these things, it's going to be confusing. Like, what is the real product name for a Metro-style app? That's how we've been referring to it right. as a real product name. Uh, and Windows so, you know, 8 or Windows Phone 8 style app? I mean, Window 8 apps? I don't know. Or maybe Windows RT apps? <laughs> Windows Runtime apps? Windows I don't know. RT uh, style app. Yeah, it's it's an interesting turn of events. I it's not you know a, a couple people t who tipped me to this said they thought there could be a lawsuit involved of some kind. Oh, they said, uh, somebody owns that copyright. But who uh, owns the copyright on Metro? I can find out. Uh, I mean, there's Metro PCS, right? But uh, every subway in major cities call them the Metro. Um, it and, would you know, be, I asked, you would have to own it in the same category that Metro you would, is, right? right? Yeah. And so, so Microsoft, when I asked them, is this about a copyright dispute? They said no comment. Um, and that's all I Sounds can get like on that. Sounds like it is. Uh, I don't know if it is or it isn't. Um, they won't say. But anyways, it sounds like the, the emphasis for it is going to be not to call things Metro this and Metro that, um, but to use some other name, some of which we know now and some of which we don't. That's that's the rumor. The rumor part is why are they doing this? Is it because of a legal issue or not or what? Uh, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at the USPTO database, there are hundreds, I mean, literally – there. of yeah. registrations of the name Metro. Yeah, I didn't even look that up, but the, yeah. The key is, of course, to find one in software or that would be sufficient, I think. 
Mm. Huh. I don't yeah. have time to go through every one of these. There's, there's quite a few. Um, they found 2,186 records with the wow. trademark Metro. London, London Station Metro. You know, Metro Tech. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's one. Metro Tech. You, heating equipment installation and repair. I guess not. The uh, ones I'm the ones I'm wondering here's about. There's one are people... Metro Mango. Ooh, that could be a problem. Oh, really? Oh, who has that? It's a self serve <laughs> frozen yogurt shop. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You know the the people I'm wondering about in all this, of course, because this happened before with Microsoft. They they had to go back and kind of rein in the .dot net over branding that right. they were doing at right. one point. And you know the people who you wonder about are people who've done mar- marketing collateral around this, or maybe books. Perhaps like where you're, you've already used the word metro style in your book, Paul. Have you? <laughs> There's a, a plumbing concern: faucets, shower heads, handheld showers, and bath faucets. Yeah, I mean, mm. I'm I'm joking about it, but it's not. It's actually not a laughing matter because you no. know people spend a lot of money to do these things, and yeah. and um, we don't know what's going on. There is telecommunications hardware trademark, wireless telephones, batteries, battery chargers. GNS Telecommunications Services does own the trademark for Metro in Telecommunications. That might be the one. Anyway, that that makes sense. Although you know, it may also be that they just don't want uh, people to use a code name. It could be. It the problem does, is there's it, nothing I, to replace it with. Right there, and I should say, uh, people are jumping to the conclusion it's a copyright dispute, and I cannot confirm that is a copyright dispute right. behind this. It's it's just at this point, they're saying for more for clarity and. Because they're going to market now with this and all that. No more code names. No more code names. No, don't say that. Then we won't have code name of the week. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley writes about Microsoft obsessively at allaboutmicrosoft.com. A must read for anybody who follows Microsoft. Uh, and she scoops them all the time. Uh, winsupersite.com is where you'll find Paul Thorat, the supersite for Windows. You can also uh, find his books in the bookstore, many of them, including the latest Windows Phone Secrets and Windows 8 Secrets soon. We do uh, Windows Weekly, the show, uh, every, uh, every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. If you cannot watch live, and it's fun to watch live. I think it's good to watch live. All the curse words are left in and so forth. The, the naked pictures, things like that. We just don't edit those out of the live because we can't. Uh, we will uh, also make audio and video available as a download just as shortly after the show's done at twit.tv slash dub dub w w. Paul, I hope you're having a great time in France. Oh, I, I muted you because I, <laughs> I didn't want to know. No, I hope you're having a great time in France, Paul. <laughs> well, allow me to uh, opine on the Metro thing then. Because oh, God, I, I muted wanted... you the whole time. I'm so you. sorry. You know, when Mary Jo was talking, I just t- t- cut down on the buzz. No, I, no, I first... muted you. I apologize. No, I, 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 I interrupt her too much. I get it. No, that um, wasn't the... it. There's just a little bit of a, a hum no, no, coming no, from no, all no. the excitement in France about their swimmer who won a gold medal. Uh, we have, we've heard this as well, and it is absolutely happening. I don't know why uh, we heard this through the publishing company, but coincidentally and luckily, we had a, a segment in the book we had put in very early on where we said, you know, Microsoft is afraid of naming things, but we're not. And so they refuse to call this environment Metro. We're going to call it Metro. Wow, and that's interesting. And we're going to do that because it's it's a way to describe it. You know, in right. other words, there's, there's a desktop environment, there's a Metro environment. Uh, Microsoft. You, you, you never need a to, word for that. Yeah, you need a you need a way to describe something because we're writing a book about it. And so uh, there were things that Microsoft did a good job on uh, description wise. Uh, they changed start. You know, they didn't call start search, start screen search. You know, it used to be start menu search in Windows 7. It's start search, and that's a, that's a good name. Um, they don't want to call it the charm bar. You know, we're going to call it the charm bar. That's what it is, you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, we had made a decision very early on that we were going to name things and be upfront about that. And so we kind of lucked out with Metro because they are backing away from that name for whatever reason. But uh, our take was, like, look, we need to call it something, and this is what we're going to call it. So... We had heard the same exact thing, uh, that uh, there's uh, some internal memos going around. We can't do this anymore. Wow, that's bizarre. And yeah, I think that the publishing, company, so <laughs> the publishing company made the right decision. You got it. You need a word. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, God forbid we call it something, you know. Yeah. We'll always have the Paris Metro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's, a Par- there's also a Rouen Metro, by the way. You see? You see? You see? 
You see, I don't they're know. Probably so, they're probably suing Microsoft. They're right suing now. them as we speak. Oh, no. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm sorry. I muted you, Paul. I forgot I did, and, I, and then of course uh, your, your entire. <laughs> I thought you got so quiet. I was like, "What's happening?" It was. Uh, it was. Uh, yeah. There's. There is a way to shut me up. <laughs> 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 <So>. <laughs> thank you, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. I'm sure there'll be just much to talk about. Now, Paul, you're not going to be here. You're going to be dining at the. Uh, Yes. Eiffel Tower. You I will lucky send you. Uh, you'll see pictures on Facebook. And I have always wanted to eat at that restaurant. I'm. I think you're. I've, I've actually already done it once, but wow. uh, now we're doing it. This How month. fun! Uh, but Mr. Pizza, I'm sorry, Doctor. P- I, de- I demoted him. <laughs> Doctor Pizza will be uh, guest hosting with Mary Jo Foley next week. Who is that, Mary yes. Jo? Peter Bright at Ars Technica, also known as Paul 2.0 in some circles. Because he's grumpy. <laughs> Paul just 2. as grumpy, 0. just as Eeyore-ish <laughs> as Paul. So just it'll be as a good British. Show. He's, he's, he's perfect. He should fit in perfectly. <laughs> well, I look forward to meeting Dr. Yes. Pizza next week. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next he's time. A good on Windows Weekly. Yeah.